<laughs> nice, nice. We love the videos games. Uh, I didn't mm-hmm. mean to actually continue. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I pause? No, we're not pausing. Okay, we're just going at it. Your 3 p.m. cake extravaganza. And Judy Voice acting? What? This is new to me. Macaroons, waffles with cream, chiffon cakes that are light as a dream. Esper, do you want to go? Uh, yeah. Laugh and sing, smile, it's true. All that sweetness waiting for you. Look here, over there. <laughs> the oven's got something special to share. Ping. Now let's see what we've got for you. This is cute. Yeah. They got voice acting. It's cooking time. You ready to make something special together? Oh, we're zooming out. Oh, it's a TV show. It is, yeah. Oh. Oh, power went out. Wow, oh, talk about a blast from the past. Hey, Gregory. I'm going back there tomorrow with your boy. I'm finally going to find out what happened 18 years ago. All right. Uh, to preface, this is case three, Turnabout Legacy. It is my favorite of the cases in this particular game because you get to go back in time. Yay. All right. 18 years ago. Correct. Um, all right. I did not mean to like immediately start it. I hate that it does that. Like You can't pause it. But anyway. Welcome once again to Ace Attorney. Hello, Stardust. Hello, Loki. I am very excited to play through this game. Um, We're excited to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the funnest part to me is me going to be trying to do <laughs> a young Shields voice. Because I have this like set up as he's like this suave guy. So we're going to have some fun trying to figure out how to pitch that up. Um, but anyway, let's get all right into it. I'm also eating dinner while I do this, so I apologize if there are moments where I'm not talking. That is absolutely <clears> okay. <throat> well, Shields, are you finally going to tell me what, you're, what we're doing here? Why have you brought me to an art gallery of all places? Also, I hope my volume's good. It has a volume, everybody. Yes. Oh, it sounds fine on our end. Volume's good. Okay. Hey, you had nothing going on. Seemed like the perfect chance to come and enjoy the magic of star sign stuff together. I'm leaving. Chill, big guy. I'm just joking. You know about the IS-7 incident, right? Your old man's last case? Of course. Von Karma took great pleasure in showing me the files as soon as I became a prosecutor. And I reviewed them again last night after your invite. See? Oh, he presented it. I was also present at the trial all those years ago, although my memories of it were somewhat hazy. Um, in investigations... Oh, flashback! Oh. As a child, I was completely in awe of my father. The sight of him in court was inspirational. Gregory Edgeworth, attorney at law. And opposite him... The man who would become my mentor, Manfred von Karma. It was quite a case. However, it ended with the conviction of the accused. Ah, so you were there too? You were in the courtroom for Gregory's final outing? Well, that'll make me explaining things easier. I wanted you to know something, see? That something being what really went down, not the truth in those files, but the capital T truth. It was 18 years ago. Smack dab in the middle of a really doozy of a winter. A real doozy of a winter. The buildings were covered with a blanket of snow. It looked like the streets were lined up like with popsicles. But things weren't so innocent behind those frozen doors. In fact, some pretty sordid stuff went down. That is their favorite word that I... So, I don't know if you all remember. They used sword many, many times last episode. So Oh, I remember, Apparently yeah. their favorite word is sordid. Oh, enjoy your writing, Loki. All right. Do 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 We're going back in time. This was back before yours truly was the fine figure of an attorney you see before you now, for you today. All right. 
I have to figure out a voice for him. What voice should I give Young Shields? Because Gregory's just going to have Edgeworth's voice just because I'm unoriginal. Yeah. But what all would what all voice would you like? Or, Esper, would you like to play Young Shields? Actually, oh. I do like Esper f before you uh before you say anything, I do have a suggestion. Okay. Rarity is kind of suave, isn't she? I <laughs> I'm trying to imagine Shields with Rarity's voice. <laughs> yeah, because I remember in That'd those be Detective Rarity episodes, she mm. kind of reminded me of Shields. Yeah. So I think we should do something along the lines of Detective <laughs> Rarity, but Shields. I don't know. You can feel whatever you'd like, but like that way, because there's a lot of back and forth. So that way it wouldn't be just a me talking show. Um, okay, that's fair. So if either of you would like to take Young Shields, I am fine with that. Tina, do you want him to try Detective Rarity? or? Oh, God, I can't do a Rarity voice <laughs> to save my life. And it obviously doesn't have to be that. It's whatever you feel in your heart Young Shields should sound like. He could sound like scrappy anime boy, you know, because he's, he's a young and upcoming guy who thinks he's really cool. So he's not quite um, like the suave laid back shields that we know of as older. So you can play right. him however you'd like. Okay. But just to be absolutely clear, so I can imagine the voice, how old is he in the present day? He's because this was 18 years ago, right? He's probably also kind of close to 17, 18. So like, if okay. not early twenties, like he's like 20, like, like in that range, like he's, he's old enough to have a job as a, a cis associate attorney. He's kind of like the vague age that like, like, like my, and, uh, he's like the vague age of Maya and Faye and like whatever yeah. vague age they, they tend to be. So in this flashback, he's between 18 and like 22. -ish. Correct. Somewhere in that range. Okay, I'll try to come up with a voice for him. Um, now, he does talk a lot, and I know you don't like to fatigue your voice, Tina, so that's completely up to you. You know what? Actually, I came prepared. I have water, and hey. I have Baja Blast. Nice. Ooh, let's go. Okay. So, in the off chance my throat gives out, I have liquids. Nice. All right, well, then you can go ahead and be Shields, and I'll be Gregory. Gregory. Right. <laughs> Gregory. Sorry. Gregory. Have you heard about Fortnite, Gregory? <laughs> Hey, uh, Mr. E, this one ca really came out of the blue, huh? It did. We were called in before the ink on the artist, uh, the arrest papers were even dry. My name is Gre Gregory Edgeworth. I don't have a British accent because I wasn't raised von by Von Karma, so I'm just kind of a regular accent. I'm a defense <laughs> attorney. I'm here visiting a client with my assistant, Eddie, uh, Raymond Shields. A murder on Christmas Eve? What's the world coming to? <laughs> Is this going to be Esper? Uh, <laughs> if, if you would like. Something. If you would yeah, like to. Like. Okay. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, I know who this is, so I don't know how. Oh, I'm going to have to like finagle the voice, but it'll happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In the dark of the night, at the end of the day. I saw two timely saviors are coming my way. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Thank beautiful. you. There he is. There he <laughs> is. Welcome, my friends, to the visitor's room. And if we're not friends yet, I'm sure we will be soon. <laughs> Whoa. Look at the guy. Talk, talk about an entrance. <laughs> Look at the officer doing jazz so hands. That's so cute! Oh my gosh, that's adorable. I was not expecting that. Me neither. Neither was I. <laughs> Sorry if I surprised you. I'm just so happy to see you both. Thank you so much for coming out. Seriously, I can't thank you enough. You're the accused, I take it. I am. Gregory Edgeworth, attorney at law, at your service. Oh, so formal. I look forward to representing you. Here's my business card. <laughs> <laughs> if you want my badge, it's somewhere on me. I don't know where exactly. This is my assistant, Raymond Shields. But pleased to meet you, sir. Please don't hurt me. 
I, uh, I'll do, um, I'll do anything I can to help, even though I'm, like, six months in. <laughs> Come on, Raymond. Calm down, please. You'll have to forgive him. He's still new to this. He's been helping me out part-time, but he's far from fully-fledged lawyer material yet. I'm getting paid seven twenty-five an hour. For you're getting. You're not getting paid. Nonetheless, I'm <laughs> hoping he'll be. Uh, he'll be of some assistance in investigating the per uh, particulars of this case. Ruggery and Eddie, it's an honor to meet you both. My job as a defense attorney is to save my clients from wrongful convictions. So the first thing to do is establish whether or not he's truly innocent. Perhaps we could begin by having you tell us a little about yourself. What am I thinking? I haven't even told you my name. I'm Samson Tangaroa. I can't remember what his actual name is. Yeah, what's uh, his uh, fan name? Uh, it'd be Jeff Masters. That's like, right! Master yeah, because yeah. oh Master God. Chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Wasn't it from the thing we saw earlier? Mm. The cooking show? Yes, no, it from wasn't. the Yeah, it was. He was from the cooking show, yeah. Oh, right. What? Is it really you? The Jeff Masters, the world's <laughs> you greatest can say Tams I, I think Samson Tangaro is fine because I think it's supposed to be like he's tangoing or I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure like what the pun is. You flatter me, my young friend. And call me Samson. All my pals do. I can look up the name. Wow. Version. Thanks, Samson. I will, I suppose. I'm jotting something down. Yes, he's not, he's he's very. It's not the best hand. It's not the best handwriting, but it'll do. Well, he's he's excited. You can see those little the doe eyes. <laughs> yeah, and he's like sparkling and shit too. Yeah. I can't believe I'm meeting you in person. Seems Raymond knows something of our client. Mr. E, Mr. E, it's THE Samson Tangaroa, the singing, dancing, confectionery making sensation. Oh. I'm a huge fan, apparently. Yes. <laughs> what shall we make today, kids? Macarons, waffles with cream. Chiffon, Chiffon cake. cake's better. Oh, yeah. it's fine. Well, it's sorry. You're okay. <laughs> Sing, no, smile, it's, fine. it's true. All that sweetness waiting for you. Look there. What, where? Over there. Oven's uh, got something special to share. Yeah, like the the, 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 the instrumentals in the background. Like, but yeah. it's it's going really fast. Jazz hands! Yeah, and I did a cute little fist bump. You did! I almost started dancing along. No way! I got to sing with Samson Tangaroa! This is a dream come true! <laughs> Thanks, little pal. It means a lot to hear you say that. Now down to business. <laughs> My apologies, <laughs> but I think we need to discuss the matter at hand. Also, I'm very bad at dancing. Of course. I'm sure you're both very busy. You can learn to dance, but I mean, okay. <laughs> it's too late. I'm, I'm <laughs> too old now. <laughs> All right, where would you like me to start? Let's see. Talk about you. So you're not just a confectioner, but also a singer and a dancer? I sure am. When I'm having fun, my body just starts moving. You must really enjoy making desserts. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a confectioner if I didn't. I live to make sweets that will bring joy to others. Oh, hey, they're not just things, they're works of art. Sparkling, dazzling, mouth-watering creations, the stuff that dreams are made of. So he aims to create, sorry, I'm eating dinner. I'm just like, stop making Edward talk or making I'm, Edward talk. Um, I was, uh, no, you're I good. we're talking about shields. No, so he aims to create joyous and inspirational pieces, does he? I'm telling the game not to make Gregory talk. I understand that the incident in question happened at your mansion. Oh, it did. We were holding an international confectionery contest there when... A body was found inside one of my creations. Ooh. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> the inside one of your... 
No way. Oh man, I vividly remember this one. It's such a good so, case. The detective in charge placed me under arrest because of it, and now here I am. But I could never take a life. Never. I'm sure the police will see that too in time. They'll realize their mistake. I, I, I sure hope so. Because... Hmm, and what can I'm you tell us about myself. the victim? His name is Artie Frost. He was taking part in the contest. Mr. Frost was a wonderful confectioner. His creations were things of real beauty. I just don't understand. Why did he have to die? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He seems genuinely upset over the victim's death. I mean, I would too. I would too. If he, if, if I had a client die inside my creation, I would be filing a lawsuit. Well, he was a competitor, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think I have a pretty good measure of the man now. Mr. Tangoro. Wait, Tangoroa? Tangoroa. Um, there's just Tangaroa, one last yeah. thing I need to confirm with you. You didn't kill Mr. Frost, correct? Correct. I swear to you, I didn't do it. Well, I just met you, so you can't lie, so I'm going to believe it's, you. It's a That's common the... thing with these episodes. <laughs> like I told you, I can never take a life. Never. You can trust me. You can you can spread that knowledge uh, decades in the future. I will. He seems quite sincere. All right, I'm going to take you at your word. Thank you for being so forthwith with me. For right with me. For not forthwith. <laughs> Likewise. It's good to talk to somebody other than those detectives. I, I'm I, Oh, speaking of detective. Oh? We'll head to the scene of the crime and see what we can learn. We'll be in touch when we have something more to tell you. Goodbye, Gregory. Goodbye, Eddie. I'm counting on you both. Oh, there she is! Ooh, is her? Ugh, it's pretty cold out here, huh, Mr. E? I never saw so much snow. I mean, I do live in California, so it makes sense. <laughs> yes, and it doesn't seem like it'll be letting up anytime soon. But just look at this place. What a sweet house Samson's got. It's huge! It's even got saxophones. Yes, big enough to hold an international confectionery contest, no less. Welcome, welcome, everyone! Come on in, we'll have us some fun! <laughs> it's fun that you're playing both the husband and wife. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! Are you alright? You just whip me with your apron! <laughs> I'm sorry! Would you happen to be Mr. Gregory Edgeworth by any chance? I would. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm... Raymond Shields, Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Look at his little hair! Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Shields, welcome to our humble abode. Judy Bound, it's an honor to meet you both. I guess now, what she's was supposed her to be. Name? Yeah, I'm trying uh, to remember. It was Catherine Hall. That's right! Hall. Yeah. yeah. I'm the housekeeper here, and Mr. Tangaroa's assistant. Y you're no housekeeper. You're Judy Bound. The Judy Bound. You know a little something of my work. Not a little? I watch you on TV every chance I get. I'm Bacon Bob's biggest fan. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say so. We'd be nothing without our fans. Look at Shields' hand just like shaking as he's writing the shit down. Yeah. He's like trying to contain it. And what might Bake and Bop be? It's only the biggest show on TV. Every kid on the planet loves it. The dynamic duo of Sanson and Judy make delicious sweet stuff all while singing and dancing. Don't know how this show came outside of Japan, but okay. Like this, check it out. 
Or at least I think this is set in... I don't know where this is set in. This is set in Jamaica. Jamaica? <laughs> no, canonically, it's basically America, but with Japanese uh, court laws. So kind of like a like a more modernized like Chinatown? Not Chinatown. No, uh, it's Tokyo. just it's just it's a nondescript location that is huh. neither Japan nor America. But has cheeseburgers. <laughs> like huh. there's there's old um there's there's definitely old silly lore uh way back in the first game when, you know, making things making kids or young ones young people interested in japanese culture wasn't as big of a thing and so instead of going out for like ramen or going to get like rice balls like onigiri they would be like donuts and cheeseburgers <laughs> you know, like they, they would talk about things right. like that like to, so it's like it's joked within the fandom that it's basically like jamaica it's like this weird place so right. it's kind of I, I just i just get really confused with the lore of these games sometimes because like they say it's like set in a fictional world it, yet is. it looks relatively similar to our world it's basically just fake fictional life parallel world where right. par where parrots can and orca whales can be witnesses but you know who's counting <laughs> orca whales i forgot <laughs> um all right go ahead yeah. that was a wonderful performance mr shields bravo <laughs> I dance along every time I watch the show. <laughs> Perhaps Many Miles thoughts. might enjoy it too. I'll suggest it later. But all this dancing really takes it out of a guy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm the world's worst hostess. Here, nothing relaxes the body and mind quite like a cup of tea. I just have clink, Baja clink, Blast, so... Flatter. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is... Oh, gosh. Ceylon? No. Ceylon? Ceylon? Correct? Ceylon, maybe? Yeah, Ceylon tea? Correct. It's delicious. Its citrus aroma is said to improve one's ability to concentrate, as I recall. Interesting. So this is what Ceylon tea tastes like, huh? How odd. The saucer's cold. Yes, it's so that the tea cools down more cool. Some of our guests don't like it too hot. I see. These teacups are very unique, too. The design is really something. You think so? Thank you so much! I ordered them all the way from France. They're my absolute favorite. They were designed by a marvelous sculptor named Paul Halik. Have you heard of him? He makes the most amazing tableware in the world! You're clearly a big fan of his work. Oh, I am. These teacups are my greatest treasure. She's certainly not afraid to show when she's passionate about something. If you don't mind, Miss Bound, I'd like to move on to the reason we're here. Can you tell us everything you know about the unfortunate incident that occurred earlier? I, uh, of course. I'm sorry for getting so distracted. I, I guess I'm still in shock. Because I'm the one who found the body, you see. You discovered the victim? Is it true that the body was recovered from inside one of Mr. Uh, Tangaroa's cremations? It is. We were in the middle of the, of the cremation phase when... I heard the sound of something big collapsing, coming from Samson's room. Ooh, crash! Samson, are you in here? Oh, a coin. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Ah, there's the point I was missing. Ah, uh, uh, yeah! God. Exclamation point. When did that <laughs> body get there? <laughs> I opened the door and went inside, and there was Mr. Frost's body. Thank you. I'm sorry to make you relive such a traumatic experience. Think nothing of it, please. I only wish I had more to tell you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think I cut out a bit, my bad. Oh, no, you're good. Now, fit. Up oh, there we go. Okay, oh, so it was. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Internet, why? Uh oh, I think stream oh. died as well. Stream did it? die. We're going to hang out for a second. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Hang oh tight, friends. God. What? Why am I always thinking it's my internet? 
It's not yours, it's I, fine. I always think that too, like on my end. I'm like, well, if something's going wrong, it's probably uh -huh. mine. <laughs> we'll wait a second. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like frozen, frozen. Oh. Man. Everything seems okay. Maybe it's an OBS thing. Oh, oh. Oh. Nope. Man. Come on. Oh. Hello? Chat, have Hello. we returned? Are we back? Perhaps? <laughs> Mayhaps. It looks green. I'm just waiting for it to refresh on my end. Chat, if you can hear me, uh, say Eureka. It looks like stream is back. What yes, that's that's what I'm seeing, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one has said Eureka, so... Damn. It seems fine on my end, though. Okay, well, we're gonna... Con we're gonna continue. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Shields, you have to save Samson! He's no murderer. He could never do something like that. Of course. Leave it to us, Miss Bound. Thank you so much. I'll go serve the others their tea then. Come, Raymond, to the scene of the crime. Yes, sir, Mr. E. <laughs> transition. Like Batman 1960. Right. Pretty transition. much. <gasps> oh. A pirate ship. Now, I was him on um, uh, Ben's stream, so can I also be him here? Yes. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Who would like to be the ship? Ooh, I kind of uh, want a different character that we see a little later. So yes. Tina, do you want him? Um, If you can take young shields, then I'd be willing to trade. Okay, sounds good. All right, sweet. No way. Everything in this room is made of chocolate. I can't believe I'm getting to see so many of Samson's creations this up close and personal. Reminds me of a one of that one scene from uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where yes, yeah. that, the one fucking like palace is made of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I might be more excited myself if the room wasn't a murder scene. Shudder, just hearing you say <laughs> that <laughs> sends a shiver down my spine. Now, Shields, what if we talked about? Uh, verbalizing your, um, like, uh, your shuddering. <laughs> <laughs> that might just be the temperature in here. It's rather cold. Yeah, now that you mention it, it is pretty chill. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Oh, bless you. Discord cut out your sneeze. Are you oh. good? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I just sneezed off screen, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, okay. Defense on the scene already? That was fast. A pleasure to meet you, Gregory Edgeworth. I'm representing Mr. Teng uh, Tengaroa. This is my assistant, Raymond Shields. Nice to meet you. Bad. Detective Terrell Bad. The detective in charge is named Bad. A man of few words. I was gonna say, I remember him <laughs> eating it! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> hmm. Something about this just doesn't taste quite right. This boy. <laughs> there is something wrong with and him. And he eats it! Ah! You are eating your notepaper? He likes to chew over his thoughts rather literally, I'm afraid. It helps him to digest and remember them. He's a little weird. <laughs> he's, he's a project of mine. There's a reason I'm not paying him. It's a little quirk of his. Uh, please try to ignore it. I certainly do. Although I'd be the first to admit that's easier said than done. With introductions out of the way, Detective Bad, would you mind if we joined you in investigating the scene? Sorry, not gonna happen. What? How come? Mr. Edgeworth is Mr. Tangaroa's attorney! Yeah, and attorneys would do anything to get him off the hook. They even put words in their clients' mouths. 
Do you think I need that on my crime scene? Mr. Edgeworth would never do something like that! Huh. I don't trust attorneys. Okay, kid? Detective, you established my client's supposed guilt based on an investigation of the crime scene, correct? That's usually how it works, yeah. What of it? Then extend me the same courtesy. I believe he is innocent, and I would like the chance to prove it. You believe he's innocent? And you didn't even see the scene yet? That's some flimsy lawyer in. That is exactly why I wish to see the scene for myself. I need to ensure that my belief is based on solid evidence and sound reasoning. Humph. You about to tell me you are not leaving until I let you look over the scene? I am. Tch. Fine. Knock yourselves out. Thank you, detective. <laughs> but I'm counting her. I'm coming around with you. Like I said, I don't trust attorneys. Yeah, they're just suckers, like this one. <laughs> if you're going with that, go ahead. If you're good with that, go ahead and get to it. That was a lollipop this whole time? Yeah, I'm bad, but I'm not bad bad. Smoking's bad for your health. I must admit, I didn't see that coming either. We'd better get started then. I need you to take notes, Raymond. On it, Mr. Reed. Let's get this over with. Hey. Alright. Water. Ooh. This is a fine selection of nautical paraphernalia. You think one of them could be the murder weapon? No. They're all made of, they're all made out of chocolate. You'd have a hard time bludgeoning someone to death with one of them. Chew. Can't tell what's real in here. They really do look genuine. Can hardly tell the difference myself. True testament to Mr. Tangaroa's skills. Alright. I guess let's p do the important thing and look at the crime scene first. Ooh. So this is where the body was discovered. Yeah. They took it away already. But everything else is just how we found it. Okay. Boink. It appears the body was inside the treasure chest. Yeah. Woman by the name of Bound found it. This is the same. Yeah. This is the same. Oh, but you have to do your ah again. I need, I need the- Oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Ah! There you go, perfect. Seems like she heard something- <laughs> There's my- <laughs> What? There's my coin. <laughs> yes. Seems like she heard something breaking and came in to see what it was. If only we had just a little more information. Hmm? There's something else in here. Huh? It's... Looks like a seal of some kind. With somebody's initials and an intricate shape carved into it. Is it for making those fancy wax things on documents? Do you think it belonged to the victim? No idea, but it's gotta get logged away. So I'll take that. No, that belongs I, to found. I was gonna say, I found it! <laughs> <laughs> it's really rather impressive making an entire ship out of chocolate. That's Samson Tangaroa for you. Don't you just want to take a big bite out of it? Which part to bite first, though? That's the real head scratcher, you know? Bite any part of it, kid, and you'll be off this crime scene so fast your head will spin. Hey, it was just a joke. Stop staring at me like that. I do sometimes wish Raymond would keep his cool a little better. What's that? One of the stands for the ship is broken. The ship must have collapsed onto the treasure chest and smashed it open. Wait, do, do you think? Could that be how the victim died? Was he crushed by the ship? If he was, this becomes an accidental death and not a murder. You too serious? Don't worry, detective. For the moment, we're simply discussing a possibility. I was being serious, though. You, just eat your paper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> detective, can you tell us a little more about the state of the victim's body? Let me see. Got a picture here someplace. You can see for yourselves. Ooh, blood. Death was from blunt force trauma. 
And what about the weapon? Has it been found yet? You can ask the prosecutor in charge about that. The detective's not one for sharing much, I see. Would you mind if we borrow this? No skin off my nose. It's not like it's official. Found took it with an instant camera She found uh, when she found the body. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to think. She's like, oh, click. <laughs> <laughs> an instant camera? Like it's a disposable or something? <laughs> Good job, Shields. <laughs> no. Have a cookie. <laughs> it means that it develops the pictures right there and then when you take them. No way! Sounds pretty convenient. Now then, I'd better get my facts straight and take down some notes of my own. Hmm, there's something in this picture that contradicts with the current crime scene. I'll need to call on my powers of deduction to figure out why. I think it's the fact that the head trauma... Oh, I didn't mean to talk to you. I don't want to talk- <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. I wanted to do this. I don't want to talk. Interesting. Can I do breaking and broken stand, maybe? The stand broke and the ship collapsed with it, and the loud sound it made brought Miss Bound running. Yeah, said the ship had already keeled over by the time she got in here. Why did the stand collapse? What caused it to break? Maybe the whole thing was off balance from the get-go. Could that really have been the case? Bopey dope bope dope dope. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Oh, there's a this way. Aha! It's titled Voyage of the Red Rover. It's after, after sail in the seven seas, the legendary ship happens upon a great treasure at last. This piece is a tribute to the adventurous spirit of our ancestors. Who knew? So they sailed six whole seas before they found anything? Not exactly the luckiest crew out there. Sometimes you gotta take a bunch of wrong turns before you find the truth. That's what we've... That's what being a real detective is all about. Did they even have detectives back in those days? Well, that was dumb. Okay. Ooh. There's some very tasteful tableware here along with the kitchen utensils. This tea set is the same design of the one Miss Bound served with us with earlier. I think Samson could have been drinking tea out of that? The pot and cup were destined for Prince. His were the only ones they found. Um, was that the case for the utensils, too? Everything else had been washed, so there weren't any prints to find. And if Mr. Tangaroa was wearing gloves while he was working on his confectionaries, that could explain why prints were only found on the teapot and cup. Badoop. Ooh, gloves. Uh, gloves. Tangaroa wore them when he was working on his masterpiece over there. They're conveniently good at hiding fingerprints, too. I suppose it's possible to employ them in such a manner. But is it really all that suspicious to find a pair of gloves in a kitchen like this? I'm a detective! Everything's suspicious. It's the job. Alright. Let's chat! And you are... Go ahead, Tina. I don't know how to start this. <laughs> Harunk. Harunk, I guess. Sorry, meditating. Did you want some detective? Oh, I'm an attorney, not a detective. Gregory Edgeworth, a uh, pleasure to meet you. And I'm his assistant, Raymond Shields. I see. Name's Carmelo Gesto. I'm a confectioner, here for the contest. You are? What's your specialty, Mr. Gusto? Hmm. 
How magical of me. The art of air and sugar. No way! Look at that! It's a little baby sea <laughs> I love how Discord cuts it off. <laughs> it's a dragon. Noble soaring creature of the skies. That's a dragon. It does look more aquatic than airborne. No need to sugarcoat it. My design sense is weak. I know better than anybody. That's why I'm heading to Shenfa when this is all over. I need to train hard. Perhaps we should get off the subject of his design sense for now. So what are you doing in here, Mr. Gusto? I didn't think they were allowing civilians on the scene yet. Detective wanted to know more about one of the pieces in here. Makes sense, seeing as he's a contestant. Perhaps I should ask him a few questions of my own. Tell me about yourself. Those are some interesting implements you use, Mr. Gusto. Oh, these? It just... It took me a year to master. Sugar blowing pumps. They put air into the sugar. Ah, uh, look, I make chicken. They're so cool! It's like watching a sword master do his thing! I'm no master. Not a day goes by that I don't hurt myself one way or another. With sugar and air? That's why I wear red. That way, it doesn't matter when I make a mess. The way of the confection art is a lonely one. You never stop learning. Not until you die. <laughs> the die. way of the confectioner sounds like a long one, too, if he's still injuring himself on a daily basis. What can you tell us about the contest? Based on what we've seen so far, favor does flavor doesn't seem to be the only criteria at play. The contest was Tangaroa's idea. It's about art. Confectionary as art. Confectionary as art? Art you can eat. Every part of it. Every single item in this room is edible. <laughs> the shields, shields is like, really? Bites Edward, uh, bite, bites uh, <laughs> Gregory's arm. No, I'm not edible! <laughs> I am not edible. What do you think you are, monkey? <laughs> Sorry. Well, you tell, tell me one thing, I gotta prove it. That's how it be. <laughs> That's why I eat okay. my paper. My <laughs> paper's edible yeah. too. <laughs> You yeah. have to finish your little experiment. Don't do it on me, okay? <laughs> okay. The whole place does kind of smell like chocolate, though. Tangaroa is a genius. A once in a generation talent. Flavor and flair. He has a door. And if you can't outdo the god of confections himself, you can't win. I don't know, man. Beating out the greatest in the world seems kind of hard, yeah? As it should be. Whoever beats him becomes the greatest in turn. That's the real prize here. Nothing else matters. So you're competing for a title, effectively? Da. And a treasure. The ultimate cookbook. Tangaroa's most prized possession. If you want to know more, it's all written down here. Ooh. It's the list of rules that was given out to contestants. Oh, we should read those. I'm like giving him a Russian sort yeah, of it's accent, a... despite having a car. He's got an having, Italian like, name. An Italian -like yeah, name. yeah. <laughs> He's like Russian Italian. This is you. Oh wait, no, 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 no! Did you hit about the incident? Hmm? It was the the last button you were supposed to hit. I'm not sure if this is the one. No, no, no! Oh. I'm I'm just talking with him. Oh, whatever. Sorry, I don't know much about what happened. I only heard about it after the judging was over. How was the judging organized? It started at 3 p.m. Thing overall make, began making the rounds right then and right, right around then, excuse me. <laughs> you okay? I don't know. I seem to be having a stroke. I'm too <laughs> old for this. He left his own room, then worked his way around the venue clockwise. My creations were the first to be judged. After that, he went to Scone's room. Scone is another contestant. I don't know much about her. 
What can you tell us about her, even if you don't know much about her? <laughs> I just, so I don't know much about her. What more do you want from me? Ruthless. Brutal. There's nothing she wouldn't do to win. She was working with Grim, some kind of dreamscape. And over here, Jack Frost. <laughs> then, last of all, Jack Frost's room. <laughs> the pony. His thing was flavored ice, sculptures this time, or so I heard, before he himself turned into an ice sculpture. <laughs> um, Bound found the body. Well, Tangaro was still making the rounds. She panicked, ran to call the cops. Tangaroa went right on judging, claims he didn't know a thing about it until afterward. Went ahead and looked over the victim's work, even though the guy was nowhere to be seen. Oh, pretty suspicious behavior in anyone's book. I don't have enough information to challenge him on that yet. By, by the way, Detective Bad, what, what were you and Mr. Gusto talking about earlier? I was going to ask him about the piece on the wall here, the one in the frame. Seemed like something was off. Thought I'd better ask somebody who knows about this stuff. Oh, there's a handprint! But then you bozo showed up and pulled me away from my very important work. Perhaps we can take a closer look at it together. Can't take a hint, can you? Mr. Gusto, would you mind helping us out? Of course. Confectionery is my life. Even though I almost killed myself on three different occasions. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I'm gonna look at the handprint. Are these finger marks? Yeah, but we don't know who's yet. Still haven't figured it out. No fingerprints, no ID. Finger marks without fingerprints. They could certainly be important to the case. Hmm. It's a real head scratcher, alright. Not really. I'm guessing whoever it was wore gloves. Ah, where's your sense of romance? Of adventure? Because I don't think now is the best time for <laughs> that, kid. <laughs> right, there doesn't tend to be much of either at a crime scene, Raymond. Save I'll... the adventure is kind for when you are at home, kid. It's a journal, belonging to the captain of the chocolate ship, also made out of chocolate. A Diary of Despair. That's some title. Come, hearken, see how we crossed the sea and rode the red tide to mis misery. Quite a jaunty rhyme for such a tragic sounding tale. There's a hole! Who knew you could ship that words? Who knew you could make a picture this pretty out of chocolate? Samson really is a god among men! Is it really made of chocolate, though? Looks far too much like a regular illustration to me. You have a good eye. I'm impressed. Here's a cookie. Oh, thanks. But, that, but, <laughs> but that's no piece of candy. That's the ultimate cookbook. The ultimate cookbook? In other words, the grand prize. Duh. What? So it's not made of chocolate after all? But I thought everything was edible in here. <laughs> I mean, it's technically here. still edible, but... <laughs> just, the book is simply inframed in some. You just can't eat the whole damn thing, you know? Watch me. <laughs> Maybe, maybe save your experiments for when you are at home. But this is, this is what my training is led for! And like, he just eats more of his notebook paper. <laughs> right! <laughs> <laughs> Turns out to be coconut flavored. <laughs> Dangaroa showed it to all of us when he gathered us here to explain the rules. So the participants knew that the grand prize was in this room the whole time. Anyway, you see it too, right? The frame? Something's missing. Ah, oh, the oddity detected bad was going to ask Mr. Gusto about earlier, yes. You're right, Detective. Something is missing from this frame. So it's not just me. Huh? What's missing? <gasps> I'd better show Raymond which part of the frame is missing some chocolate! Shoves his face in it. <laughs> Take that! Oh, I oh I didn't hear his voice. Uh, we'll hear it later. I was talking over his voice. Look at the decorative work on the corner here. Something's missing, no? Oh yeah! It's different from the other side. Hmm. That's not like Tangaroa. The balance is all wrong. But that's not all. Take a look around. 
every confection in this room is missing some small bit. You're right. The candle holder, the nautical stuff, they're all, they're all like that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had no book in my, in my, in my mouth. <laughs> uh, what, have I, what have I told you about talking with your mouth full, Raven? <laughs> I don't know. My chewing always, you know, drowns you out. I've never actually heard. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> or did Tangaroa just want it to look like somebody messed with his work? He'd never do that to his own creations. Never! Could this have some deeper meaning for the case? Uh, uh... Achoo! Are you all right, Raymond? Uh, yeah, but it sure is chilly in here. Throws him his coat. <laughs> oh, I thought he was gonna take it off. <laughs> I yeah. was half expecting it. <laughs> yes, it wasn't exactly warm out in the fountain room either, but it's even colder in here. Oh, would you like to borrow oh. my jacket? No, I, I'm fine. And besides, you said you'd give it to me when I finally got my attorney's badge. Aww. Aww. Huh, I did, didn't I? Why do they have the heat down so low? Chocolate needs to be kept at the right temperature. Take a look behind that panel on the wall. What panel? This one. Do you not see it? <laughs> It was here this whole time. Do you Where's need a the better panel? <laughs> do you need a better prescription or do I need to shove your face in it? Anyway, there's one <laughs> in each of the contestants in the contest rooms. Tangaroa hit them so they wouldn't spoil the aesthetic of our works. And what do the controls do? They adjust the temperature and the lighting. It goes all the way down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how that converts to Celsius, but I'm too stupid for that. <laughs> Cold enough to keep any confectionery from melting. So in effect, each room is a giant freezer. Duh. It's 59 degrees in here. No wonder I'm cold. Hey, Detective Bad, you uh, mind if we turn it up a little? Do not. You gotta shoot him. Preservation oh, of the shit. crime scene. It's the foundation of detective work. I'm not a detective. The same goes for attorneys, Raymond. We must never disturb the scene of the crime. Get used to the cold. It's all part of your training. Chocolate needs to be kept between 59 and 65 degrees. There's no way around it. Humph. You know the temperatures by heart, huh? Guess it is your job. It's the very least I should know. And any, any real confectioner should be able to tell you that and more. Alright, what about lollipops? And cream? There's a kind of weird questions, but I'm asking them. You know, it's never too early to ask the right questions. <laughs> if it's not too hot or if it's not too hot or too humid, the lollipop should be fine just about anywhere. Even in my mouth? Cream <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> Green needs to be kept out around 50 degrees. Need to watch out for heat and humidity, huh? Duly noted. Just avoid Florida at all costs. That's all I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> Detective Bad kind of brightened up when he was talking about lollipops, didn't he? I suppose he must be very fond of them. I don't believe there's any more to be found here. I'm gonna look anyway! <laughs> Candelabra. Made of chocolate. There's a title here, The Light of Life. Well, this particular light seems to be missing one of his life-giving flames. Does it have some sort of symbolic meaning? Or could it be? Boink. These controls can be used to adjust the room's temperature and lighting. Red, yellow, green, dark blue, light blue, white. That's a huge range. Temperature set to 59 degrees. Light color set to white. The pieces in here are made of chocolate, that's why. Didn't I just say that like five seconds ago? I, I wasn't know. listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> light light makes them look better. Mr. Tangaroa must see the room itself as a part of his carefully crafted creations. Okay. Wee! Hello, officer. Look at him run. How's it looking over here, officer? 
Nothing of interest in that cupboard or... Yes, uh -oh. sir. Okay, I was like, whoever wants to take them. <laughs> so, there is? Oh, uh, no, there isn't. Just a blowtorch used for cooking and some tableware, sir. You heard the man, Mr. Attorney. Nothing to add, am I right? No. So, you do have something to add? Uh, no. Can't get a straight answer out of nobody. Perhaps you should ask a straight question. Uh... What are you investigating, officer? Uh, sir! I was just taking the temperature of the water here! What have you learned? Oh, uh, it's warm, sir! The stream in each room flows into the main fountain, and then the water circulated back into the rooms! Unusual, to say the least. I've never seen a house quite like this one. Which folks, they're all crazy. Eat the rich, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's my line. <laughs> a real crime scene. This is... Oh. Oh, dang. This is a real, <laughs> real crime scene. This is so exciting. It was very, what? like... It was very suspenseful, because it was like, this is... <laughs> We're like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> This is Sorry, a... it must have been. It must have been when I adjusted my mic because I. It's like I'm like very far away from it. No, you're fine. This isn't a game, Raymond. Except it is. I need you to take it seriously. Don't worry, Mister E. I'm taking notes on everything about Ace Attorney <laughs> Investigations Two, Prosecutor's Gambit, Case yeah. Three. And then eating them. <laughs> you <Yeah>. are. <laughs> what kind of notes? Well, notes about Ace Attorney Investigations Two, <laughs> Prosecutor's Gambit, Case Three. <laughs> And all of this delicious stuff is made. Can't wait to try it for myself. I'm not playing around, Raymond. Take this seriously. But you are playing around. You're playing Ace Attorney <laughs> Investigation 2, oh Prosecutor's Gambit, Case 3. <laughs> yes, yeah, Mr. Edgerud. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, was there anywhere I haven't investigated yet? I think you got everything. Gloves. Yeah, I, I don't. Oh, there's. Uh, I don't think that matters, but there's oh. an open thing there. Maybe the water? I don't know if there's anything. Uh, there. I checked the water. Dang. Yeah, there's there's nothing. The only not uh, check mark is this one. And I guess it's because it's this button right here. Yeah. Looks like a fire alarm. Yeah, and before you start prodding it, it's not made of chocolate. Pushing bells and will start ringing. People will come running from the security room. A whole bunch of hassle, so don't. I know you want to, but don't. Honestly, the thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Humph! Typical attorney. What does being an attorney have to do with anything? Okay, now I'm done. Okay, bye! Bye-bye. I can't leave? I got... Okay, I'll talk with Bad then, I guess. I can't. <laughs> I want to talk with you. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Nothing's been moved since the body was found, correct? Reserve the scene. That's rule number one of any investigation. They took the body away, but everything else untouched. Could you tell us a little more about the state of the body before it was taken away? Bound. Hook a picture. You'll have to make do with that, Mr. Lawyer. I get the feeling that the good detective is none to do with uh, is none too fond of defense attorneys. Probably best not to rely too much on him and search the scene for clues and contradictions myself. I guess I'll deduce. All right. Is it the? Tamper? I would assume so. Because every one of them was broken? Okay. All of Mr. Tangaroa's creations were missing a little piece each. Including one of the stands that was holding up the ship. Somebody really wanted went all out. Do you think it could have been the killer? It's certainly a possibility. Either way, I think we can safely say the stand was damaged in our mystery person's tampering spree. And when it broke, the ship fell and smashed open the treasure chest. 
which would have remained closed otherwise. Uh... Can I leave now? Then why is there... Hmm. I guess the cookbook? Okay, uh, I'm back. Bird was freaking out. You're fine. I think this is all the same as before. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it wants me to do, because I can't even, like, deduce anymore. And you can't leave, right? I cannot leave. Oh, did we knock in a new logic thing, or no? No. No, there's, there's a... Just the one left. Okay. There's just the, there's just the one left. Gotcha. Oh. Oh. The Red Rover and the Crimson Tide. Looks like this title is the inspiration for everything on display here in this room. The I was going to say, it also hints towards the Alabama Crimson Tide, even <laughs> though it's not canon here. The ship and the treasure chest, of course, but also all the other nautical objects on display. Certainly a suitable, suitably grand theme to which to showcase Mr. Tangaroa's talents. Ah, uh, there's nothing I can do. Can I... I don't really have any... Oh, here. Uh, we should examine... Let's examine things. We haven't examined anything. Contest rules. Okay. Uh, judging will proceed clockwise from leftmost room. All contestants gather in the room when judging ends. non confectionery items may not be used. Stands and displays will be provided. Okay. Contestants may not enter another contestant's room until judging has been completed. Uh, victim's body was found in Samson Tangaro's room inside a Chaka Trest. Blood lost from blunt force trauma. Okay. Tipa. Yep. Oh! Ayo! Oh. Look, there's something stamped on the bottom. It says PH. I suppose that must be Paul uh, Halik's, right? Halik. Halik. Yeah. Halik. 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 Uh, pottery mark. Um, those are his initials, after all. Miss Bound said she's a big fan of his work. His initials, huh? So if I made it, it would say R.S. Perhaps you should practice by initialing your personal belongings first. I don't know what I was trying to say with that. <laughs> yes, what a gorgeous design. Really? It just seems a bit out there to me. Like, how do you even get your tea in there? You open the little thing. Art, oh. isn't, <laughs> Art isn't about function, Raymond. It's about form. Hmm. Guess I'll have to take your word for it, Mystery. This art stuff is way beyond me. <laughs> okay. Can I... Okay, I have to examine this, I think. I can't examine the shield? Can I logic? I can't even logic! What do you Are mean? You stuck here now? There's gotta be some way to progress, but I don't know how. Wait, examine your badge. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to connect the seal with the bottom of the teapot. But it's not letting me... Can I present... Hello? <laughs> I want to show you my badge. Do you want to... Can I present you here? and Take that. That's... What a weird seal. If you use it with a stamp, it'd come out as a PH, right? But if it's just for show like that... Like a ring, it appears to say H9, I believe. H9. Hit 9, maybe? Someone's hidden streak? Nah, seems unlikely. Sounds like Detective Bad might be a, a fan of baseball? I was just gonna point that out. I'd like your opinion on this if you don't mind. I do! If there's one thing I hate, it's small talk. Seems like he only cares about things that are directly related to the incident. I can prove the tea is related. Seems the culprit made sure to wear gloves. Couldn't lift squat from those finger marks. 
But perhaps you can extrapolate something about the owner from the size of the fingerprints, for example? It's not as easy as it sounds. Sorry, but these finger marks are all pretty worthless as evidence goes. There's no need to be hasty, detective. After all, even the absence of fingerprints tells us something of interest, don't you think? Humph. You lawyers have an answer for everything, don't you? Huh. I'll take that as a compliment. I don't know what to present. Uh, that, he doesn't like that. Okay, uh, maybe I'll talk with Shields. Hi, Shields. Do you want to make the, the... No, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> All Real right. Time, blah, blah, blah. You're okay. I I can't. So I can present to him. So I can. Okay. So I can present and talk to him. What is this? What do you make of it? <laughs> what? Oh. Wait. This is the same as earlier. He doesn't want to look at it. Do you want to see the contest rules? Oh, the winner of the contest gets to call themselves the world's greatest confectioner. And that's my goal. After that, I'm going to shine far to hone my crafting skills. Once my creations look as good as they taste, I'll be truly unstoppable. Shouldn't he have perfected that before entering the contest? Okay, I can't... You can't do anything. I can't do anything! Move! Okay. I don't know why the game put you in this position. There's nothing left. It's still saying that I can talk about something here. Maybe there's something that we left out? Oh. This must be the title of this piece. Angel beset by thorns. That's pretty mysterious. It really gets you thinking, huh? I... I think I'm a fan. Uh, you have good taste. I'm especially fond of it myself. Simply captivating. Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Gusto praised me. Now, now, Raymond, don't make this into a thorny issue by bragging about it. Nah, you have bad taste. <laughs> Was that a dad joke, Mr. Edgeworth? <gasps> I'd better make note of this momentous occasion. I will be to your senses later, attorney. Where did I make a joke, dad or otherwise? Okay, I, I, I have now exhausted everything. Oh! A well-equipped kitchen, as one might expect. Sadly, it doesn't look like there's much to be found in the way of clues. Not that of interest in the fridge, either. We checked. Then why am I here? Can't... I can't leave. I don't think I can leave. There's nowhere else for me to go! What am I? I might ask for someone to tell me where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> yeah, I've got a walkthrough ready. Oh, to go. do you? Yeah. Okay. What should I? Is am I supposed to talk or present something to someone? Uh, I think you talk to bad the forensic the forensics officer in the other stream, which is weird because I think we I did talked that with him. Huh. We talked, we talked, we talked with him already. Uh, hmm. Did we do two logic, like, puzzle piece things in this room? I have no more, I have one thing. Okay. So I, have, I, think... I have no additional puzzle pieces available. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Huh. Oh, hey! I can't use logic. I There's nothing I can logic to Sean. I want to logic, but I can't! 
are. I'm, I can't logic. I can't talk to anybody. I There's nowhere else for me to examine. Okay, this this tell this yeah. this is saying that I have yet to find anything, but it gave me a check mark to say that it was done. You I need think to boyfriend has returned. So oh, I, I have to deduce. To. I forgot to deduce. I'll be right back. Okay, no worries. I am going to fucking deduce the fact that it's a, a seal. I don't know. Do I deduce? I'm gonna deduce that. Eureka! That was wrong, apparently. Oh, I'm looking for a contradiction. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, what contradiction am I looking for? Missing that ought to be here. What is missing that ought to be here? There's a piece missing here, but I'm assuming it's because there was blood on it? What am I deducing? I don't know what it wants me to deduce. Is it looking for the murder weapon? But no, we said they couldn't find the murder weapon. I may need assistance on where I'm supposed to deduce. Um, so it will be on this, like the left screen. Oh, okay, the left screen, okay. Yeah. Is it not the seal? It's not the seal. Um, because that's not really contradicting anything. We okay. just have the seal already. Is the fact that is the is it the fact that the ship is in the middle versus I don't think so. versus his blunt force trauma? Is it the stand? Uh, can you look at your court record or your inventory? Inside the chest. Is it the fact that... Bloodless. Is it the... Is it just the fact that he's inside the chest? And the falling of the ship should have happened... After he died to open the chest? Is that what it is? Do you want, like, a legit answer, or are you, like, uh, speculating aloud? I'm speculating aloud. Gotcha. I'm attempting to deduce. So the only thing that I can think of is the fact that... The blunt force trauma was to his head, but the ship landed in the middle. And or the fact that he was inside the chest... Because, like, because we don't know the time of death yet. Inside. Blood loss from Brunt Force trauma. I don't see anything in the picture that's contradicting. Yeah, I don't get it. My brain is, my brain not working. Uh, give hint, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so, ooh, how do I give a hint that doesn't make it immediately obvious? <laughs> um, where is it located? Like, is it, is it the, is it in the middle, I assume? It's like in the, like, middle section, yeah. It's, it is the chest, right? It's something about the chest. Because <sighs> the only thing I can figure is that Again, like, to have been put inside the chest, it was made of chocolate, and therefore he would have had to have been dead before the breaking of the ship, right? Because the chocolate was made around him instead of being opened? Is it the fact that this is missing? Is that, is that, but that, that doesn't make sense, because that's where his death, his, the stuff was. I don't know, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't want to lose any more of my life, though. Do you want me to tell you just what to do, or do you want to... Potentially, uh, 
I, I have a feeling like I know like what it's supposed to be, but it's not very obvious. Like it's not giving me the obvious answer. <laughs> yeah, I think you have pretty much just the rationale there. So it'll be that broken area okay. that you want to do this on. Yeah, and I'm presenting the picture of him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, okay, it is the fact that the chocolate's been removed, but I figured it was because there was blood on it. You said the only thing that's been removed from the scene is the body? Yeah, that and a piece of cloth it was wrapped in. Then something here isn't quite add, doesn't quite add up. It doesn't? Take another look at the scene in front of us, Detective. A very conspicuous pool of blood that should be here is clearly missing. I guess I just assumed that they would have been taken anyway because, yeah. Exclamation point. You're right. Don't remember anybody mentioning they removed the blood along with the body. I'm sorry that took 20 minutes for me to... Oh, something, fine. something... That's the thing with these games. A lot of times I'm like too... I, I think too far ahead. The same thing happened to Ghost Trick too when I was playing through it. Um, I just would think ahead too much and I had to like work my way to get there. <laughs> Let me yeah, check... Yeah, that's how it for these kind of games. <laughs> yeah. Let me check with forensics. What is a mystery? What did you figure out? Compare the treasure chest to the photograph and the real thing. Apparently, my assumption that they've just cleaned up the blood or took the piece with the blood was valid, but it apparently is a good enough point that it should have been mentioned earlier. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not a detective. In the picture, the solid chocolate bottom continues underneath the deceased head. However, and yet, the part of the chest is now gone. The part with blood all over it. Yes, good. Exactly. So did the police remove it? Or perhaps the killer? It wasn't forensics. They're saying nobody took anything like that away. Interesting. So somebody deliberately removed the blood from the scene? Could be. Interesting. Ah, finally! <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like looking at the walkthrough being like, what specific I know! Do you <laughs> I keep forgetting I have to deduce stuff. Cause it's not like, I should probably deduce something here. Like it, it, it doesn't give those prompts. I think we're about done here for now. Yay, gosh dang it. Well, if it wasn't convinced, well, if I wasn't convinced before, I am now. Tango Roa did it. No two ways about it. What do you mean? All the rooms in this place, locked from the inside. The only way to unlock them was from the outside, with this key. It was you. You have it. I see. And only... And who had access to that key? Who do you think? Tangaroa. And it's the only... And it's the only one. There aren't any copies. Of course not. With the mansion key, Tangaroa would, could slip into anybody else's room. Anytime he liked. And he could even lock his own room from the outside if he wanted. But Mr. Tangaroa's room wasn't locked, was it? Nope. Which is exactly what makes him a suspect. Would you care to explain your thinking? Ooh. I get to talk to myself. If the door had been locked when the body was found, Tangaroa would have been the obvious suspect. Which is why he deliberately didn't lock his room. And why he smashed in the lid of the treasure chest so the body was on full display. Everyone was supposed to be gathering in his room when the judge didn't finish up. So he made it look like the murder happened while he wasn't there. Of course he did. The only thing he didn't plan on was bound finding the body. Anyway, that's my thinking on this whole thing. Good enough for you, Mr. Attorney? Do you also believe it was Mr. Tangaroa who damaged the other pieces in his in this room? Yep. I know you had to believe your client. That's your job. But I'm a detective, and I serve the law. And no matter how squeaky clean somebody might seem, a suspect is still a suspect. I fully understand your reasoning, detective. Now, would you mind if I applied a little critical thinking of my own? Heh, <laughs> do your worst. Just as, the just as the detective won't compromise his devotion to the law, I won't compromise my beliefs either. 
You get him, Gregory. And I'm not about to just accept his version of events, in fact. I'm going to show him the piece of evidence that highlights the contradiction in his claims. I don't know what that is yet, but I'll figure it out. All right. Uh... I'm going to press that. That was weird. That's a weird voice for him. I don't I don't know if I enjoy that voice for him. Yeah, same. <laughs> but he also again doesn't have a British accent, which is very funny. Um you're saying Mr. Tangaroa himself deliberately smashed the treasure chest open? Yep. If he hadn't, the body would have never been found. I struggle to see how he managed to destroy his creation while judging the contest at the same time. Exactly. And besides, there is no way he would have disrespected his sweets. He eats every last crumb on Bacon Bob while dancing. <laughs> That's the only way his stuff gets destroyed. This isn't about what happens on TV, kid. You know about Bacon Bob, Detective? Am I the only one who isn't familiar with this show? Wow, I never would have guessed. Can you sing the theme song too? Uh, Taramasu. Here, where, everywhere. I don't, I don't remember the words. Never mind that now. Focus. The point... He didn't deny that he could. Uh, the point is this. Tangaroa was responsible for, for breaking that lid. Yeah, the fact he knew, like, at least some of the lines, that just shows he's a big fan. <laughs> I want to go back to the, the, the second one. The lid did lock his room. Hold it. I don't like that. Hold it. And why would he deliberately not lock his room? His door? Because if he locked it, he might as well have held up a sign and say he did it since he had the only key. But maybe it was just a coincidence. Maybe he just left it unlocked without meaning to. He just happened to leave it unlocked and somebody just happened to find a body inside? Come on, kid. You'll never make detective thinking like that. But I want to be a detective. <laughs> I want to be an attorney. I'd be grateful if you stopped trying to steal my apprentice. Look, there's a reason why Tegaro had left his door unlocked. Okay. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold it. I'm just going to press all of these. Do you have a clear idea of when exactly the murder took place? Okay, here's a good line of questioning. Not yet. Autopsy report's still pending. Because of course it is. And yet you still went ahead and arrested Mr. Tangaroa? We may not know when the murder happened, but we know when the body was discovered. It was while Tangaroa was judge in Gusto's room. Can you add that to your thing, please? The perfect alibi if he could set, up, set it up just right. But still no grounds for an arrest. Surely you have to agree with that. Do I? Especially when I got nothing more to say to you. Why do I get the feeling he's hiding something? Detective Bad seems pretty convinced that Mr. Tangaro is the culprit. There's no way he would have vandalized his own creations. No way! Still, the treasure chest did get smashed in. There's no denying that. Hmm, perhaps we should focus more on what led to the body's discovery. Doing so should make it easier to spot the flaw in Detective's bad theory. So the sound is what made it discovered. The door had been locked. Tangaroa. This is the only one I haven't pressed, so. Hold it. The judging began in Mr. Gusto's room, correct? Yeah. I kind of wanted to check his hard candy stuff out first. Uh, I guess I'll take Gusto oh, while yeah. Tina's gone. Yeah. Hmm. In that case, how about a demonstration? Well, what's it gonna make this time? A doggy! Oh! Well, it's you, detective. Uh, are you calling him a dirty dog? Hmm! It's a wolf! <laughs> Huh, a lone wolf. I like it. I'm starting to enjoy these little displays. Anyhow, anyhow, I don't know why.
the lid was closed until the ship collapsed. The part of the treasures was covered. Okay, so the lid was closed until the ship collapsed. So something is... And why he smashed in the lid of the treasure chest. Do I present it there? Because he... He didn't smash it. It was the boat. Objection. Okay. Oh, that was... I don't know if I like that voice very much. <laughs> We've established that the body was hidden inside the chest. And that this bound only came running into this room when she heard a sound. Seems reasonable to infer that the sound was that of a chocolate boat collapsing. Shua seems likely, based on the evidence. And yet you assert that it was Mr. Tangaroa who had smashed the lid on the chest. I believe this photo makes it clear that it was the ship that did the smashing. <laughs> Many dots. And if that had occurred only moments before Miss Bound had entered the room, then it couldn't have been broken by Mr. Tangaroa, who was out judging the contest at the time. It's weird that he doesn't get a voice. I feel like he's a pretty prominent character. Yeah. But I guess Gumshoe also doesn't get a voice, so I don't know. I I never said he did it then and there. He could have done something to the stand. So would it collapse while he was in the middle of judging? Objection. That's really weird. Have you heard any way of proving that assertion? Nope. But the investigation isn't over yet. There's still time. So he doesn't have any con anything conclusive. Have you found any prints in this room besides those of Mr. Tangaroa? Yep. On the door. Exclamation point. But we found Mr. We found Tegaroa and Frostpence on there too. We were all brought in here right for brought in here for a <laughs> briefing, right before we started work on our creations. Those prints are probably from then. I take it you haven't checked any mis of Mr. Tegaroa's works for prints yet. Why would we know that somebody tampered with them? Therefore, it's possible they left some prints behind when they did so. You make a good point. Fine. But if we don't find anything, your guy's still on the top of my list. Got it? Yay, we win. Yeah. You, check all this chocolate stuff for prints. Now. Yes, sir. Right what? away. <laughs> That's okay. I was specifically him, so. Oh, Detective gotcha. Bad. We finished dusting the chocolate and we found prints that don't belong to Mr. Tangaroa, sir. Go on. Who's? Delicia Stone, sir. She's one of the contestants. Good work. You can go back to whatever you were investigating before. I guess the water? Does the temperature change at all? <laughs> no, sir. It's the same. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So it seems we have a suspect besides Mr. Tangaroa. Humph. Even without your loyally input, I wasn't about to wrap up the investigation anyway. I'll go speak to Miss Scone. And see what she has to say to his, uh, for herself. Delicia Stone. Mr. Gusteau's mentioned her too. He said that she was ruthless. That she'd do anything to win. This Scone lady sounds like a pretty suspicious character, huh, Mr. E? I like that he calls him Mr. E. Yeah. Yes, I think we'd better try to speak with her as ourselves as well. Detective Bad, would you mind if we accompanied you? Babysitting you is not my job. I just babysat you. It is only fair that you babysit me in turn. <laughs> oh, come on. It's only fair. But I guess you did pick up a couple of useful clues already. So if you want to tag along, be my guest. Thank you, detective. You're too kind. Don't put your hat back on. Oh, but Detective Bad, sir. I don't think they're such a good idea. The lead prosecutor is still busy in there. I'll be fine. Me and him don't exactly see eye to eye anyhow. Who is this Tim? Who do they assign to this case to? Manfred Von Karma. What? They gave it to Von Karma? He hasn't lost a case in 25 years! Because he cheats! Manfred von Karma, a living legend over at the prosecutor's office. 
We've never faced one another in court, but I've heard plenty of stories. They say he'll do anything to ensure a guilty verdict. But I can't let that distract me. For now, I need only to continue to do what I believe is right. Yeah, you do that. Oh, I don't know, Loki, why their why they're magpies are yelling. Tell them to be quiet. Tell them to be friends instead. Oh, there she is! You were wanting. Cool if I voiced her? Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, I was like, I think this is the one you were excited to voice. <laughs> Whoa, a candy castle! And look, there are even some little elves to go with it. S Squint. Oh, in the back. Okay. There they are. Oh. Rooms laid out pretty much the same as Tangaroa's. It's not as cold, though. That's something. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like there's a temperature control panel in here, too. There it is. Over there where that orange light is, right? Good job. <laughs> Have a lollipop. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we better take a closer look at it when we can. It's like a fairy tale storybook in here. And this whipped cream covered construction must be the work of Miss Delicia Sto uh, Scone. I keep wanting to say stone. <laughs> Where is Miss Scone? <laughs> Looks at pink lady with curly hair. <laughs> Me? Why, I'm just over here, dearie. <laughs> She's so fun. She is. Oh, just look at you lovely boys. Delicious Scone at your service. Some cheeky blighters back in Blighty even called me Miss Delicious, tee -hee. Called a lovely boy at 34, and expected to say at least. Wait. Wait, what? Called a love- Oh, he's 34! Oh! He just- He looks a lot older than they <laughs> Honestly. Uh, unexpected to say the least. Lovely boys? Really? Even mystery. Excuse you. I am young and vi and, and I am full of life. Oh yes, dear. You, the detective over there. You're all lovely boys to me. I'm nobody's lovely boy, lady. Name's bad. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> a lovely bad boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wonder just how old she is. I wonder if she's older than me, the most ancient <laughs> person in the world, at thirty-five. Who could be older than, or 34, who could be older than me? Finish this up so we can get out of here, Mr. Attorney. Straightens his tie. I do like that animation. Yes, all right. Oh my gosh, he does have a voice. <gasps> oh yeah. <gasps> what a voice. <laughs> oh, do you want him or do you want Oh, me that's to karma, him? isn't it? I can be yeah. him, I can be him. Oh yeah, yeah, go for it. What's the meaning of this? Chit-chatting with the defense. Mr. Edgeworth, some scary guy just stepped out of the castle. I forgot how scary his voice was. Honestly. Von Karma. What? He's Manfred Von Karma? Sorry, Mannykins. The notorious prosecutor, Von Karma himself. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Von Karma. Gregory Edgeworth, attorney at law. Humph, I couldn't care less what your name is. Ooh, the snap. Your job is to lose to me and disappear, never to show your sniveling face again. What a thoroughly rude individual. Those piercing eyes, that furrowed brow, shudder. You're even scarier than they say. Shields, what did I tell you about verbalizing your shudders? I don't know, I'm, I gotta eat my notes about it. I gotta write it down, I'll eat my notes. <laughs> You might want to keep such rude thoughts to yourself, Shields. <laughs> we were hoping you might permit us to carry out some brief inquiries, Mr. Von Karma. Huh. And why would I wish to extend you any such courtesy? This clearly isn't going to be easy. Many dots. So long as your inquiries are limited to this room, I suppose I'll allow it. Why the sudden change of heart? You, the tall fellow! Name's bad. Is that so hard to remember? Huh. I didn't ask for your opinion. The thoughts of a lowly detective do not concern me. But I do admire your spirit. 
bad. See to it that these worms don't step out of line. Why do I have to... I am not offering you a choice, detective. I need to go and look over Gusteau's room. Good day. Ooh. I like being him. He's like evil rarity. What on earth have I missed? You missed Von <laughs> Karma. Great. Oh, man. Great. More babysitting. Why aren't Detective Bad and Mr. Von Karma investigating together? They don't seem to know each other. I became Greg. I became Miles for a second. I'm sorry. Uh, they don't seem to know each other very well uh, for there to be bad blood between them. I said we got bad blood. <laughs> what? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Esther? Oh. You good? Oh, my internet my dipped for a second. Oh, like, you're oh, good. No. Well, looks like we have permission to investigate. Guess we better get to it. Indeed. I'm not sure I trust Mr. Von Karma's motives, but at least we can do that much. Hold up. I haven't been over this room yet either. You're not messing it up before I get my chance. You'll have to wait till I'm done. Huh? But I thought you were the lead detective. How come you didn't take a look at this room yet? Because I wasn't the first one that, that they assigned. One of Uncommon's pets was on the job before me. Then I killed him with a lollipop. Right up <laughs> until just now, in fact. I got here not long... I, I got here not long before you did. That answers my question as to why they're working separately, I suppose. Let's say we look over the room together, Detective. It could work out well enough bef uh, before. Then you won't have to worry about us messing things up. You can keep an eye on it as we go. Also, where did Miss Scone go? What kind of screwball attorney asked to have a detective breathing down his neck? Huh. Guess I'll guess I'm stuck with you for a little while longer. Yes, you're amazing, Mystery. Why, thank you. I am. You have our thanks, Detective Bad. Don't be too grateful. This is my scene. The second you get in my way, you're out of here. Of course, we understand. Now, shall we begin? Yay! Okay. Yeah. Where did Miss... Oh, there she is. <laughs> Alright, I want to investigate first. It's an incredible piece of work. Hard to believe this whole castle is made of sugar and cream. I know, right? It's like we're inside a magical medieval story or something. I didn't know there was, uh, you were so into fantastical things. Sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Didn't mean to get carried away there. Oh, no need to apologize. I admire your enthusiasm. I sometimes wish my own son was as animated as you, but not to, I don't want him to eat paper, though. <laughs> you have a son, Mr. E? Have I not I told you? Paper. <laughs> have I not told you I have a son? I do. He's still in elementary school, and yet he'd re rather read a statue a statute book than a fairy tale. Can't help but worry about his interests will make it hard for him to make friends. Oh, don't you worry, Gregory. He'll make two good friends that will always be with him mm -hmm. forever. And one of them is a one butt. of them is the one of and the other one's a so called great thief. That, but also uh, Phoenix Wright. Oh. And Larry Butts. Yeah. Don't say that. He sounds super interesting. He'll make a ton of friends. Me included, I'm sure. Just don't, 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 like, look into, like, 15 years later where I'm kind of a dick to him. It's fine. <laughs> I'd like to think you'd be more of a big brother to him than a friend, Raymond. Also, why did you eat the paper? I had to internalize it. <laughs> it's coconut flavored. <laughs> coconut flavored. Big brother, huh? Guess I have some growing up to do. Better take this more seriously. Indeed. Then with that in mind, shall we continue our investigation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, a, a pedestal. Huh, those pillars. They have some hexagonal in indentations. Looks like there's some well, something supposed to go in there. Well, whatever they are, they're long gone. Hexagonal indentations, huh? I wonder. Hmm, there seem to be hexagonal... <laughs> Class is covered in whipped cream, so maybe a giant strawberry? A giant strawberry with a hexagonal bottom? Look, I like strawberries, okay? Can't blame a guy for wishing. I prefer bananas myself. Did I ask Shields. your Did I ask your opinion? 
Blueberries for me. <laughs> hey look, hexagonal thingies. The doors of the castle have been left wide open. Yeah, was the guy born in a barn? He could have at least closed <laughs> them behind him. I'd like to see you say that to Mr. Von Kammer's face, uh, Raymond. Wait, there's a bunch of stuff inside. Let's see. Hold it, kid. If anybody's gonna be handling evidence, that'll be me. Chuh. Cream's gone all runny. It's all over the detective's shoes. Why are these items being stored inside a candy castle? All right, tell me what you want me to look at first. Look at the yellow thing. Two big rock crystals? Looks like somebody was using the castle for storage. Hmm. Kinda expected something a little more exciting behind, behind those doors. Oh, I know! Maybe they're giant uncut gemstones! And maybe this whole thing is based on a story about a castle with a priceless treasure hidden inside! I think I'd treat my priceless treasure with a little more care. Hmm? There's something on the bottom of them. Looks like a stand or something. Seems to be shaped like a shape of some sort. It's got six sides, I think? I was right. They are gemstones. The stands must be so they can put it on display. Well, whatever they are, it seems they're not just a large set of paperweights. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. So funny. <laughs> There's a bunch of blue cloth back there. One, two, three, four. Four rolls all together. Well, they certainly aren't made of candy. No, no idea what this stuff is for. Almost looks like somebody hid it in here. And I think I've seen fabric of the same color somewhere else before. Have I? I think that's it. I don't see anything else. Yeah. Hello, sir, what are you doing? Uh, Tina, would don't... you mind being... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, don't turn around, don't turn around. If you turn around, you'll eat it. You can't eat the castle, don't eat the castle. <laughs> this poor guy. I guess he's watching his sugar intake. All right, now we get to... These are not important as far as I know, but I- Oh, I wanted to look at the control panel. I did want to look at that. There's a small door on the wall here, just like Mr. Tango, uh, Tangaroa's room. Here. I'll open it. Hmm. Temperature is 68 degrees. Light set to green. Didn't Gusto say green needs to be kept at 50 degrees? Temperature in here is too high. That is odd. odd. I wonder why. Don't Yay. put words into my mouth, Gregory. <laughs> you stole them from me first. <laughs> Alright, now oh, we get to talk I with her! her. Oh. Sigh! What's the matter, Miss Cone? You're saying your words aloud, like I do. <laughs> <laughs> you seem a whole lot less cheerful than you were a minute ago. Is it Mr. Von Karma? Did something happen between you two? Why, yes! N nothing happened at all! Hmm, but you just said yes. <laughs> Dee! <laughs> that was a hello yes, you silly boy! Aren't you just the sweetest little sugar dumpling? Remind me, what was your name again? <laughs> sometimes I forget, and some sometimes people call me Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Ed no, wait, not Eddie. Oh, my name. My name. Uh, oh, Starts wait. with an R. We practiced R. We practiced R S earlier for our initials. Good job. <laughs> yeah. It's a cookie. <laughs> Eddie Lumpkin, that's your name now. Okay. <laughs> oh, you'll go far, dearie. I can tell you. He's like, that's not my name. <laughs> Eddie Lumpkin, that's not even close. Seems our English gentlewoman has taken a liking to you, Eddie. Oh, oh she even got me saying it now. <laughs> no small accomplishment. It's spreading. She's not exactly what I picture when I think of a gentlewoman mystery. Never mind that now. We should ask her a few questions while we can. Could you tell us about what you did over the course of the contest? Of course, dearie. Let's see. It all started at about 10 in the morning. 
that's when we set to work. And, well, I spent most of my time here getting everything ready, as you'd expect. Oh, and then there was this lovely afternoon tea for an hour or so from uh, around one, I think. Afternoon tea? It's an English tradition. A chance to drink tea, enjoy a snack, and make small talk. Uh, so, kind of like recess. No, but okay, whatever <laughs> helps you understand it, Shields. I suppose you could say that. Ooh, you really know your onions, don't you, Greggy Pegleg? Such a clever boy. What did you call me? When did Greggy I... Pegleg. When did I become Greggy? <laughs> and where was this afternoon tea served? BTS! Out of... <laughs> <laughs> out of the garden, of course. There's a lovely little one just outside. They do it at the same hour every break time during the contest. Lay on a nice little spread, you know. But today, only me, Samson, Silly Pants, and Moody Judy were there for it. Sammy Poople had already <laughs> finished his big creation, so he was there what the whole is time. With these nicknames? <laughs> oh my god, I love this. <laughs> but poor old Chili Wings and Goosey Pants had to miss out because they hadn't finished yet. Bless <laughs> them. Chili Winks. You're saying everybody except Mr. Frost and Mr. Gusto were present? That's right, dear. To tell you the truth, I hadn't finished yet either. But I wasn't about to miss out on tea and cakes served by our two TV superstars. I went right back to work when I'd finished, though. Turtled off while the others were still, were still nattering away. <laughs> Stardust is saying Raymond taking notes, trying to remember his, <laughs> all the nicknames. All right, Chili Winks, uh, the <laughs> Greggy Peg Leg. Got it. Oh. <laughs> uh, and at any point during the contest, did you visit any of the other competitors' rooms? Oh. Uh, uh, no, dear, don't be silly. That's strange, because your fingerprints were found in Mr. Tangaroa's room. Weak! Caught red-handed. Wait, so you admit you were there? Oh, well, I can hardly deny it now, can I? But I didn't kill anybody, I swear. I suppose I'd better tell you what really happened. Just promise he'll believe me, won't you, dear? Ooh, what really happened? What exactly were you doing in Mr. Tangaroa's room? Well, I was... I suppose you'd call it research. Research? Sammy Poople's a dab hand when it comes to the old sweet making. Everybody knows that. So when I noticed there was no one in there, I just popped in for a quick bit of research, like I say. Hmm. What kind of research leaves fingerprints? Yes, that I, uh, well, it stands to reason I'd leave fingerprints, doesn't it? After all, it's hardly research if you don't have a little nibble now, is it? What? You ate little pieces of them? So, the traces of tampering in Mr. Tangaroa's room, that was all you? I, I am ever so sorry, sweeties. I didn't mean to make a mess. Wait a minute. She's wearing the same apron that Saw It wore in the prison. <gasps> oh, you're right. So they're either related or partners in crime. Or this particular brand is very popular. Likely. I just, I had to take a little bite here and there, didn't I? I didn't want poor Sammy Poople getting upset, so it was just the teensiest bits and pieces. Oh, she gives that apron to, like, I don't know, a 10-year-old Frank Saw. Yeah! Like, this will be important one day, I guarantee. When you go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and the stand holding up the ship. You took a bite out of that, too, I suppose. Oh, yes, dear. Of course I did. It was you. You brought the whole thing crashing down. I, I'm sorry, my lovely. Truly, I am. Hold on. Is that why you left the afternoon tea early? You were heading off for a second helping of sweets. I, uh, look, just please believe me. I never killed anybody. I promise. We weren't insinuating that. Her actions were certainly suspicious, but that's all about all we can say for now. Well, like, everyone believes her except for 
the detective. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Don't you have the loveliest toys, Greggy Pegleg? I was uh, trying to get you to talk. <laughs> With that color. Oh, no, that won't do. Here, let me put a little lovely splodge of cream on it. Never use the word splodge again. Please stop that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I need to logic. Alright. Uh, runny cream. Temperature too high. The whipped cream in this room is collapsing because the temperature is set too high. Someone should really change that. It's 68 degrees. My messed up shoes can vouch for that. And yet... When you open the door to the castle, the handles themselves were just fine. Yeah, they were sturdier than expected. Sturdy? That's not the way I describe most things made of confectionaries. I think we'd better take another look at those handles, don't you? Question mark? What the? I think it's safe to say those handles aren't made of candy. <gasps> she lied. It's not just the handles, the whole castle. The little elves! They're all just plastic models with whipped cream smeared on top! What? So none of this is confectionery art after all! No, it's simply made to look like candy, with the cream having been added to lend it an air of authenticity. Uh... I can... <laughs> The square hole. <laughs> the hexagon because goes the in the hole. square hole. <laughs> the rock crystal stands and the pillars in front of the castle feature the same hexagonal shape. I believe the crystals are meant to be placed on top of the pillars. Oh yeah, hexagon to hexagon makes perfect sense. <laughs> Good job, Shield. <laughs> yes, it's a cookie. But Sorry. if that's the case, that's okay. But if that's the case, then why were they being hidden inside the castle? The rolls of blue cloth and the rock crystals inside the castle. Imagine both must belong to Miss Scone. Miss Scone? What were you using the items inside the castle for? Mm -hmm. Oh, those? Sorry, Lampkin, but I'm not allowed to say. Let me guess, Von Karma. Eep! How did you know? Please don't ask me to tell you. I'll have my guts for garters. I would not, I don't want to picture that. Um, it seems <laughs> the prosecution really has no intention of sharing anything with the defense. Man, I thought we were onto something with those giant rock crystals, but... Oh, what's that, dearie? You're interested in my little trinkets? Your trinkets? Yes, my sweet. I use them to make people all lovely and relaxed. Oh. You use rock crystals and cloths to do that? I do, I do! It's wonderful. You should see it. Are we having, like, a seance? And they're not just any old rock crystals, either. They're great big lumps of salt with lights in them. Perfect for seances. <laughs> wow, those things are lamps for seances? <laughs> Dee? Oh, that's not even the half of it. Well, just, like, summon Frost Spirit, like his dead ghost, <laughs> and be like, Hey, who killed you? Those claws hold an even more exciting secret. A dead body? A dead body, that's correct. <laughs> she really opened up the moment she started talking about her trinkets. Since you're here, why don't I give you lovely boys a taste of my relaxation magic, hmm? Oh, Batty Bumpkin! <laughs> Can you get it all out and set it up for me? The name is Bad. Is that a no? Why are you being so selfish, Batty Bumpkin? I don't appreciate that name, lady. <laughs> Many dots. You! Have you finished taking photos of this room yet? Yes, sir. We have, sir. Then help Miss Scone here with something, will you? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Gee, oh, you're a sweetie at heart, aren't you, Batty B? Can you stop calling him that, please? <laughs> That's amazing, Miss Scone. You got him to do exactly what you wanted. That's some talent. Oh. Thank you ever so much, Battykins. And you, Officer Lovely. <gasps> I even... would appreciate if I was not called that. 
She's even giving nicknames to the forensics guy now. I guess it's her way of showing that she cares. So, a little too much, I may add. <laughs> what about this supposed to be relaxing, exactly? Oh, don't be a big sourpuss, Fatty B. The fun's only just beginning. Officer Lovely, you can switch it on now. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm excited. Ooh! It's a light show. Her face! Oh, yeah! Huh? Wow, it's beautiful. It is. I wish my son were here to see. I'm just gonna break up my son at any point that I can because <laughs> this game is technically about him and you're not here to play me, but, you know, I, I, I'm still important. Isn't it, though? Isn't it just wonderful? The four adorable elves and the sweetest little castle made of sweets. That's my theme, you see. And I thought it would be extra lovely if it was all lit up. Isn't it the nicest thing you've ever seen? One of the elves must be feeling a little left out. Aww. <laughs> this is how it was supposed to look for the contest. But I'm glad you lovely boys got to see it at least. Wait, shouldn't the lamps be lit up too? Uh oh, I uh... What's happened there, I wonder? I think you better take a look at the lamps and the elves one more time. I haven't even looked at the elves yet. I'm gonna look at the elves now. Boop. Itself doesn't have any illuminated cloth over it like the others. It's not fair to leave the poor guy out, Miss Scone. Well, I didn't want to, did I, dear? But one of my cloths and one of my little machines went missing. Hmm. A cloth and what sort of machine exactly? Oh, you'll never guess how it all works. Those luminous cloths are connected to these little thingamajigs. They're called, um, uh, full-spectrum light-emitting devices. They send light down to the main cable and into each optical fiber strand. That's what makes the cloth grow. Grow? Glow. Grow. <laughs> it grows really <laughs> big and covers the whole castle. <laughs> With a little bit of fiddling, you can change the light to any color in the whole wide world. Ooh. Bright red like ferocious fiery flames. Cold blue like clinking crystals of ice. They have these special batteries that last for donkey's ears, and they don't mind the cold at all. Forgive me, so these machines, they make light? What is this? Even donkey ears. What, what, what is this fiber optic you speak of? This is like the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> They're what makes the special luminous cloth light up in all these beautiful colors of mystery. I see. So much new technology. I can barely keep up with these youngins at my old age of 34. <laughs> yeah, you're ancient, Mystery. <laughs> so these light emitting devices, you lost one of them and a piece of luminous cloth? That's right, Lampkin. Heaven only knows where they could have got to. This cloth could have something to do with the case. Ooh. Uh, rocks. Rock, 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 rocks. Roxas. Rocks, there, okay. Roxas, Roxas! Oh, blood. <laughs> blood. That's a pretty blunt object right there. Ooh. The lamps appear to be broken. Bulbs are smashed, both of them. Maybe they fell and broke on the floor. Look, there's a red stain on, one, on the one on the left. <laughs> That's not just a stain. That's <laughs> jelly, jelly filling. It's ketchup. Whoa. Yep, it's blood. All right, I can smell it. I, I, I know the smell of blood. <laughs> I love the smell of tomato ketchup. What? B -b 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 blood. <laughs> why is there blood on this lamp? Could it have something to do with why its bulb is broken? We better take a closer look at the other one too. It looks the same. So Miss Scone had actually intended to use these lamps on her display. Then why were they stashed inside the castle? Maybe because they're broken. Except there's plenty of other places she could have put them. The best place to hide some salt is in some sugar. Isn't that how it goes? Or perhaps the best place to hide a tree is in a forest. Anyway, if her intention was to put these salt lamps in her final display, that contradicts a certain piece of evidence in my possession. 
I'll need to point it out by making a deduction. See? It, they could have done this in the last room. Yeah. Okay, so what am I deducing? I, I refute my earlier deduction. Can I logic something? Can I, can I be so bold? Am I so bold as to say that this is the murder weapon? I win. We know that the victim was struck and killed with something blunt. And it, we found blood on one of the lamps, which is a smashed bulb inside. Could the lamp not have been the murder weapon? For sure. It could definitely do enough damage to kill someone. You, science guy. Did you finish analyzing the blood from the lamp yet? Uh, even though we didn't tell you that there was blood on it, but I'm telling you there's blood on it now. I'm trying so hard not to, like, look at the castle. <laughs> my sugar intake. Look at the uh, castle! Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying so hard! <laughs> Yes, sir. Just got done a minute ago, sir. Which is really impressive, because we didn't even tell you there was blood on it yet. The blood is the victim's. No doubt about it. There you have it. Yay! I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for my voice crack. I know you I just... mocked me. You, you did an impression of my voice. I don't appreciate that, officer. No, I didn't. It's the castle. <laughs> the, the castle's making you... T okay. So the murder weapon was hidden in Miss Scone's room. I'm beginning to think we may need to add her to our list of suspects. Okay, I was supposed to do something. I'm gonna logic more. Okay. What was I? What did, what did he say? History. Okay. Um, her intention was to put the assault lamps on her final display. It contradicts a certain piece of evidence in my possession. Is it contradicting the fact that everything must be made of candy? I'm assuming the rules. Eureka! Yeah. Take a look at the list of rules for the contest detective. Non-confectionary items may not be used as decoration. That means the salt lamps and the luminous cloths would both have been against the rules. Is that why they were stashed away inside the castle? I think we need to dig a little further into this of Miss Scone before we say for sure. Alright. Alright, once we're done with Miss Scone, I may have to head off. Yeah, I think, because we're going to be done at 9 anyway, so I think we'll probably just get done with this whole section. And then okay. we'll be done for the night. Hi, right. can I show you this? My badge. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think about this? Ooh, look oh. at that. Don't you have that? No, that you, this, I'm convicting you. <laughs> Ooh, you've got quite the eye, haven't you, dearie? You'd be amazed at how it works. Actually, uh, never mind. Oh. Can't go giving away my secrets now, can I? Well, that was strange. What just happened? Did Mr. Von Karma bully her into staying silent about what she knows? Okay, so I have nothing to present. So can I logic? I'm gonna try. Yay! Okay. There you go. So not only did she use decorations that were against the rules, she didn't even make any real sweets. Miss Scone made a mockery of the rules. Yeah, guess she's not gonna go get crowned world's greatest now. And why is it so warm in here? Do you think it's got something to do with all this? Oh, I made it evidence. Good, okay. That's a good question. Now yes. I can present that to her. I think yeah. we better go ask Miss Scone herself. I had to, I had to do, I had the logical thing to make it an evidence so that then I could present it to her. Ugh, so contrived. Miss Scone, why is the temperature of your room set to 68 degrees? Because I hate the cold, don't I, dearie? And besides, being chilly is no good for a girl. Except uh, me, I was raised in the north, <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of used to you're, it. You're immune to the cold. E well, somewhat. 
<laughs> if I want to keep my fresh face complexion, I've got to be careful about these things. We ladies have to stay young, don't you know? How old is she really, though? That's what I'd like to know. She can't be as old as me. The the ripe <laughs> old uh, the ripe old age of thirty four. <laughs> uh, it's not polite to speculate on a person's age, Raymond. But most of your work is made up of whipped cream, and whipped cream needs to be kept at fifty degrees where it starts to deflate. Is that so, dearie? Well, silly me, eh? I've only gone and make, made a whoopsie. Wait, she really didn't know that? Why are you here? <laughs> World-class confection on my foot. Not only did she break the rules by using fake candy, she's ignorant of basic facts about her supposed craft. This scone grows more mysterious by the minute. I'm gonna present you with this! What do you think about this? Ah! <laughs> you don't oh, think wow. anything about it! Do I have the logic? There. Magical. Miss Goon appears to lack basic knowledge about how confectionery is created. She says that she snuck into another air, uh, entrance room for research purposes. Hardly the actions of a world-class confectioner competing for a major prize. Yeah, not only had I- not how I pictured a top pro acting, but she maybe just lack a little confidence, or... Or is she not actually a confectioner at all? Perhaps she had another agenda altogether. After all, we only have her word for it that she went into the room to do some research. Wait, you mean... Maybe she went in there to commit a murder. <laughs> a murder! There's no way of saying so for certain just yet. But she is hiding something, that much I'm certain of. Yay! Com Ooh, complete! Yeah! That's enough investigating for now, don't you think? Yes, we certainly found plenty of, to, of interest. Something's been bothering me for a while now. Mr. Von Karma would have surely found the murder weapon when he secured this room. And yet he didn't arrest Miss Scone. He didn't even- Oh my goodness! Oh my oh, goodness! Hi, Greeny! Oh my god, a raid! Greeny, welcome in! Objection! <laughs> How's it going? Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Yay! Oh, thank you, Greeny. What? You're so kind. Every time. Thank you. How's everybody doing? I hope we're having a, a good, wonderful evening. We're just in here investigating. Thank you, everybody, for the follows. Um, we are doing Ace Attorney Investigations 2 because it officially was released in English. So we are doing a live fan dub of it. Um, yeah. And we're on case three. I have uh, Esperoba with me and uh, Tina, of course. Your pal Tina. Hi, hi. Hello. Um, yes, the Pokemon sound alerts. I have all kinds of sound alerts. I got Kingdom Hearts in here. I got Ace Attorney. I got Genshin. I just I have all the things. I have no theme. I just, everything is my theme. The next alert set you need to make is a pony alert set. <laughs> Um, and yet he didn't answer Miss Scone. I didn't even, I even have like a Final Fantasy one in there somewhere. I think one of the gift subs is that, I'm not sure. Um, he didn't even seem interested in questioning her. I think our first priority should be found out, uh, to be to find out what he's really up to. Um, Detective Bad, I have a few things I'd like to ask Mr. Von Karma. Me too, him and Scone. Oh, could you, Fatty Bumpkin? Stop staring at me like that! It appears Detective Bad is just as suspicious of Mr. Von Karma as Miss Sco and Miss Scone as I am. Miss Scone, would you be so kind as to accompany us? Of course, dear. Where are we off to? To find Mr. Von Karma. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. All right. There he is, the man of the hour. Mr. Von Karma, we'd like to speak with you, if that's all right. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Judging by your faces, I'm guessing you found the murder weapon. We did. It was in Miss Scone's room. Which means that Mr. 
uh, Tangaroa should no longer be the only person of interest. Huh, nonsense. It doesn't matter where the weapon was found. Tangaroa is guilty. And as long as this is my case, guilty he shall remain. How can he be so sure of Mr. Tangaroa's guilt? You have an explanation, I assume? For why the murder weapon was in Mrs. Scone's room? Humph, of course I do. And I'll be delighted to share it with you. Ooh, I get to talk to myself again. Here we go. Ooh, let's go. All right. Tangaroa killed Frost with one of Scone's salt lamps in order to frame her for the murder. To complete the, to complete the deception, he took it back to her room once the deed was done. After all, if it had been found near the victim's body, Tangaroa would have uh, seemed do uh, doubly suspicious. A body may be hard to move, but a murder weapon? Considerably less so. And that is why there was no piece of evidence on the scene that pointed to a particular suspect. Except there was... Oh! <laughs> so that's your assertion, that Mr. Tangaroa took the salt lamp back to Mrs. Scone's room? It is indeed. But it is more than an assertion. It is a fact based on my own investigation. You mean you have proof that he did so? Humph, I don't need any such thing. What? Tis, tis, tisk. If you have a rebuttal, I'll be happy to hear it. Ooh. But I highly doubt you'll be able to fault my logic. Get him. Yeah, get him. Okay. Get him. Um, why? Well, I don't know why he want to frame her, but I don't want to press that one yet. Die. You're talking about the lamp made of rock salt that was hidden inside the Candy Castle, correct? <laughs> candy Castle, Charlie. Precisely. <laughs> it was the one who found. I was the one who found it. So be grateful. It's thanks to me that you even have such a vital piece of evidence. What made you go inside the castle in the first place, if you don't mind me asking? Good point. Uh, maybe he just wanted to see what it was like in there. Objection. Objection. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Fools. You think I went in there on a whim? I went in there because detectives are an incompetent lot, so I investigated it myself. Exclamation point. But I had nothing to do with the initial investigation. That's right, Detective Bad wasn't a part of this investigation until very recently. Humph, if you want my trust, Detective, you'll have to earn it. And a good first step would be to stop wasting my time. Now, if you'll allow me to continue. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna press this one. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. So you think he hid the body in the chest but removed the murder weapon from the crime scene? Yes. He foolishly believed his own creation to be the perfect hiding place. Eek! Oh, I'm sorry! I had to help myself! I think you mean you couldn't help yourself now. She doesn't seem very sorry to me. In any case, the weapon was taken away while the body remained at the scene of the crime. Okay, I'm pressing all the wrongs ones. I... I want to present that... But we don't know who the seal is, like, related to yet. So I don't know if it's relevant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna press this one. Hold it. So he took one of the salt lamps from Mr. Scone's room back to his own? Indeed. He prepared it beforehand, knowing it would be the perfect weapon with which to kill Frost. But we found the lamp in Mrs. Scone's room. Surely this casts Mrs. Scone's herself in suspicious light? Humph. Perhaps if you would let me finish. Now as I was saying. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Ah, uh, the only thing that I think would work is the last one and then the little seal. But I'm gonna save before we do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stop talking. Uh, take that. Objection. Nope. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's an odd thing to say, considering how it contradicts with this. Avon Karma is perfect in every way. There's no contradiction here. None. I mean, I guess, did I press that one? I don't think I pressed that one. 
There was a Gernurk in there as well. Hold it. But if there's no proof, how can you say for certain that Mr. Tangaro is the culprit? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Is that the best you can do at pressing me? Listen here. The presence of the body in Tangaroa's room is in itself proof enough of his guilt. Objection. And you didn't even, you didn't find evidence pointing at any other possible suspects? Perhaps you should take another look. You might... <laughs> We're just yelling objection at each other. <laughs> you really don't give up, do you? There's no need to take another look. Tegoro is guilty. End of story. If you insist on asserting otherwise, then show me some proof to back your ridiculous claims. I had to think back over the scene of the crime. If Mr. Tangaro really isn't guilty, then there must be something that points to somebody else. Pressing Mr. Von Karma on any of his statements won't have much effect, I fear. My only hope is to find a piece of evidence that contradicts his claims. Okay. Ah. Uh... I don't know of any other evidence. Aside from the missing... I guess we haven't really looked at this yet. So the lamps both have these hexagonal stands on the bottom, right? Yes, I imagine the indentations of the pillars were made to accommodate them. And boy, do they fit like a glove. Blood. This lamp isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, it appears to be broken. Would have been nice to see it all lit up just once. Miss Scone said it's good for relaxation, right? <laughs> I could use some of that, you know, after if that murder happened. Right, and all. Ex exactly, with the blood on it. Perhaps I'll get one for the office. Uh, I all. <sighs> He's in a blue... He's in a blue tarp. Right? Yeah, I think so. Is that... Oh, he did say there was a cloth, right? Hold on, 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 hold on. Someone mentioned a cloth, right? I thought What's-His-Face mentioned a cloth. Gusto? No, bad. Let's try it. Well, I'll investigate first. A roll of cloth of navy blue. It's a very calming hue. I like it. Did you like my rhyme, Shields? I did, Mystery. That was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe do a little more practice, but you got potential. <laughs> that was real deep and all, Mystery, but let's get back to the main event already and line it up. Oh, that was bad. Uh, <laughs> all right. I wasn't trying to be deep or anything, though. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, colors. Whoa, look at all these buttons. I believe they're for changing the color of the light. Try pressing one, shield. Ooh. There, now the cloth is all lit up. It's so pretty, no matter how many times I see it. Can I change the color? No. cloth is now glowing with a pale blue hue thanks to the light emitting device. Didn't Miss Scone say one of these cloths and its machine are missing? Who do you think could have taken them? I have no idea, but I suspect it might have something to do with our case somehow. Can I logic? I can't logic. No. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't want to press. I wasn't meaning to press. I was trying to logic, Objection. but I can't logic outside of... Objection! 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 <laughs> okay. Um. Wait, I just remembered. I'm the judge. I'm not here. Can I present the cloth? I That's what so. I was gonna hint at. Objection! Yeah. Well, it's just we didn't connect the cloth initially to the crime scene, so I think that's why I was hesitant. It's true that the murder weapon and the bloodstained chocolate were removed from the scene of the crime, but something else remained that does point to one person in particular. Take another look at the photograph of the body. L uh, look at this photograph. Every time I see it, it makes me laugh, if Every you will. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. 
Yeah, that's how it goes, mystery. You got it. <laughs> the cloth covering the victim's lower half. It, it's in the photograph. <laughs> is that not... Whoop! Is that not one of the same luminous cloths we found in Mr. S Mrs. Scone's room? What's that, dearie? One of my lovely, colorful cloths. At the scene of the crime, you say? Humph. Luminous cloths. Nonsense. I see no light to speak of. I guess he doesn't know how it works. We just did it in front of him and everything. <laughs> it may look like ordinary fabric at first glance, but attach one of these light-emitting devices, and the difference soon becomes apparent. Many dots. Exclamation Look point. <laughs> Look at his face. I don't think he was expecting that. But the fact that the cloth can be lit up is neither here nor there. We have to show why it's important. One of the rolls of cloth from Mrs. Scone's room went missing. And if you look closely at the blue cloth in the picture, wouldn't you say it's clearly made of the same material, Mr. Von Karma? Humph. The salt lamp and the luminous cloth both belong to Miss Scone. And seeing as the body was wrapped in said cloth, Surely even you have to admit that's suspicious. More dots. Mr. Von Karma, I think it's time to accept that a number of factors point to Miss Scone as the person of interest. Oh. <gasps> Her foot! Aww. Gruggy pet lug, how could you? You're accusing me of all people! I'm not accusing you of anything just yet. But I do think you're hiding something. I, I, that's not... Just to clarify, your assertion is both the murder weapon and the cloth were in Miss Scone's room prior to the murder? Exactly. Tis, tis, tis. Is something funny? Only that you've walked so carelessly into my trap card. This isn't Yugi or Mr. Von Karma. <laughs> Screw the rules, I have money. Um, neither the Fair cloth, point. neither the cloth nor the murder weapon were in fact in her room. So sorry to have to break it to you. What does that even mean? What are you talking point. about? Tangaroa spotted them before the contest began and noted that the lamps and cloths con, con, ooh, contravened the rules. There we found our word of the day. He subsequently confiscated them and took them to his own room for safekeeping. What? Then, after the contest began, nobody saw hide nor hair of Frost as he had secluded himself in his room. And the only person capable of entering his locked room was Mr. Tangaroa, possessing, as he did, the only key. Yeah, and I just I, looked up oh. the definition of... Oh, go ahead. No, uh, yeah, just let me finish the sentence. And as you now know, he's also in possession of the lamp used to commit the murder. So you see. I have everything I need to get Tangaroa convicted all along. Well, how does it feel? Yeah, I just looked up the... Oh, fuck. No, Sorry. you're good, you're good. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I looked up the definition of contravene, and it sounds similar to uh, contradict. Oh, nice. So yeah, that's our word of the day. Contravene. To act or be in violation of. Nice. To have lost to me before even setting foot in the courtroom. <gasps> Arg, This can't be happening. Wait. All our hard work was for nothing. Miss, Miss Scone. Why didn't you tell us your stuff was confiscated by Mr. Tangaroa? I, uh, well, dear... Mannequin said that if I spilled the beans, I'd end up being the one under suspicion. Mr. Von Karma said that? And he wasn't wrong now, was he? You two accused me yourselves just a second ago. Explanation point. <laughs> tis tis kisk. Pathetic. Curse you, Von Karma. You led us to the murder weapon knowing we'd make certain assumptions as a result. One more thing, my pathetic friend. There are two, and only two, sets of fingerprints on the murder weapon. Two? Yes, those of Delicious Scone and Samson Tangaroa. No others were found. But we know the guy was wearing gloves. 
Tengaro will use the lamp he had confiscated to murder Frost. And it was foolish enough to hide it in Miss Scone's in Scone's room without first removing his fingerprints. And the blood. Tis tis tisk. At this rate no one will uh, even need to testify. My perfect evidence will do all the talking for me as I secure his guilty verdict. Objection. But wait. What about the luminous cloth that was left behind in Mr. Tegaroa's room? Humph, what about it? He probably meant to return it after disposing of the body. Argonant again. I don't have enough to disprove any of this, what he's saying. Tis tis tisk. No more pitiful objections. Yeah. Then get out of my sight and close the door behind you. Mr. E. I'm not about just to give up. Humph, I see you mean to waste more of my time. Bad, escort them off the premises now. Oh. This investigation, it's not over yet. Detective Bad, what is the meaning of this? Sorry, but I'm not in the habit of leaving cases half solved. There's still one last thing from the crime scene we haven't identified. It's an Asia point. He's right. We still have the evidence of somebody's activities to account for. Humph! We can discuss your lingering doubts at your leisure, detective. But whatever you might, they might be, they're no business of the defenses. Objection. I beg to differ. There's a piece of evidence I'm still not satisfied about either. And I suspect it might be the same thing that's bothering Detective Bad. What? This is the yet unidentified something that was left in Mr. Tangaroa's room. That one is the only one that I can think of. Take that. Apparently that was wrong. <laughs> what were you, what was the, the, the finger, the handprint? Was it the handprint? No, I think it's... we discussed it. But I mean like, is that the, the, the thing? I don't think we have like confirmed prints on the finger. Yeah, so it's like right. unidentified. Right, 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 right. Take that. Hmm. Okay. There are finger marks on one of Mr. Tengaroa's creations. Ooh. Dots. Many. Sup supposing they belong to the murderer. It could certainly explain how the prince didn't end up on the murder weapon. Ooh, got him. How did you know so much about the crime scene? Because I let him look around. Objection. You, I know. You let the defense examine the scene, bad... Are you out of your mind? I don't remember you telling me not to. Humph, insolent worm. You would do well to remember this then, detective. To the results of your next salary review is up to me. Oh, oof. Detective Bad's in trouble now, too. I'm sure glad you're my boss, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, I'm not even paying you. As long as you're... Yeah. <laughs> As long as you remember that the results of your salary review are up to your performance on this case. Humph! A mere attorney uncovering such a fact based on a cursory investigation. I'm almost impressed. But it's entirely possible that these finger marks belong to Tangaroa. After all, he wore gloves while preparing his creations. Objection! <laughs> but can you... <laughs> it's just so weird. But yeah. can you prove conclusively that the finger marks are his? I want to know who does his voice. Furthermore, oh, oh. yeah, I was gonna say because I it sounds like somebody I know, but I'm almost scared to think that it's him. Furthermore, there's still something about Mrs. Scone that doesn't add up. Is there, or are you simply not prepared to admit defeat? Oh, stop it, Greggy! Stop it! Stop it! Why are you being so mean to your poor old pal, Delicia? Um, it looks like the voice actor is Gregory Quaranta. I think this is his only role as Gregory. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I owned up to nibbling poor Sammy Poople, sweeties. What more do you want? It's cute that they got someone named Gregory to voice Gregory. Oh, yeah! I don't want to have to make you a suspect. That much is certain. But you lied to us. And you're still not telling us everything. Sob. <laughs> Greggy. Stop it! Stop bullying me! I'm gonna not- I can't not when you literally say the word sob. You're just like my- Mystery, she can- <laughs> You're just like my apprentice! 
She can sob as much as she wants, <laughs> Mr. E. I'm sorry, but you don't even know the temperature whipped cream should be kept at. What kind of professional confectioner doesn't know something as fundamental as that? I'm sorry, all right. I'm sorry I'm just a silly, muddle-headed girl. What more do you want me to say? I don't think you're muddle-headed at all. I think that you were never a confectioner in the first place. Objection. Enough. I'll thank you to keep your baseless accusations to yourself. Evidence is everything in the courtroom, in case you've forgotten. If you're going to accuse a witness of perjury, then I demand that you present something to back it up. But this isn't but a courtroom, we, is it? Nevertheless. We, we do have something, though. Uh, it's the, t the temperature. Which we don't have. I guess this. Take that. Every single one of Miss Scone's creations break the rules of the contest. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. The offending items, the cloths and the lamps, were duly confiscated, as we've established. And the witness did not go and bring them back to her room herself. Objection. But those weren't the only rule-breaking items in her room. What? The entire fantastical world Miss Scone created, every last bit of it, is all just a collection of plastic models slathered in whipped cream. It's kind of a weird fetish thing, I don't know. That cream is the only authentic confectionery in the room. Explanation point. No real world title contender would ever stoop so low. Is this true, bad? Yep, saw it with my own eyes. Stepped in it with my own shoes. <laughs> uh, did we finally convince him? Nope. With her, <laughs> with her <laughs> lies exposed like this, surely you can't continue to deny the facts. Miss Scone, your actions place you firmly on our list of suspects. Well, but no, dear, I, I'm no killer. Then why don't you finally start telling us the truth? Who are you really, and why were you tampering with your rival's work? Sigh. <laughs> All right. And the truth is, I'm not the adorable little cook you see before you. Gasp. <laughs> I'm actually a, a pharmacist. Not a pharmacist. A pharmacist, if you can believe it. I am a pharmacist. Pharmacist. A pharmacist. A pharmacist. Oh man. Oh, I can't oh, believe man, him. I just imagine she's crumbling <laughs> under the pressure at this given moment. I can't blame it's him. It's only for getting being... worse. I can't blame him for being so surprised. It's hard to find a real pharmacist these days. This... <laughs> <laughs> this couldn't be further from what we'd imagined. So, what's somebody in your line of work doing entering a contest like this one? Oh, well, I, I just love eating sweeties, if you must know. And Sammy Poople's sweets are the best, or so they say. I just had to enter. I didn't mean to end up making it all the way to the final. I had many dots. Even Mr. Von Karma's lost for words. That's it? That's the only reason you're here? Yes, dearie, and it was worth it. Samson Silly Pants' sweets are the tastiest treats I ever did eat. And the finger marks. Were you the one wearing the gloves? No, 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 that, that wasn't me, dear. I don't even wear gloves. <laughs> See? <laughs> Remember, Miss Scone's fingerprints were found everywhere else on Mr. Tangaroa's other creations. I'd say that points her not having worn any gloves. Exactly, Lincoln. Reggie Peg Legs got the right end of the stick. I'm an innocent woman. Oh, Is your head filled with cream, too? Sorry, mannequins. Her head might, might not be filled with cream, but she's certainly no master of subterfuge. Miss Scone, were Mr. Tegaroa's works the only ones you sampled? No, dear. I couldn't help myself. When I'd finished my afternoon tea, I tipped over to Chili Winks' room for a little taste, too. Exclamation point! You were in the victim's room, too? Yes, dear. Nobody was in there, you see. Quite possibly because the occupant was already dead. But I could only stomach one little bite. I never tasted anything so salty in all my life. Ooh. 
so I had myself one of the tasty star-shaped bits off of the side to cleanse my palate. You have quite the sweet tooth, don't you, Miss Scone? Indeed. What didn't she sample? That's everything, I promise. Greggy Paggles, Mannequins, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make a mess of things. I like Greggy Peggles. Yeah. As long as what you've told us is the truth, that's all that matters in the end. Do not think for a second that this means I myself believe you. I'm going to investigate the victim's room now. We'll see how truthfully you've really been after I'm through. Mr. Von Karma, please, let us accompany you. I think it's only fair that we be allowed to investigate the uh, veracity of our, our conclusions. Humph. Accompany me if you like, but don't think for a second you'll be permitted to conduct your own investigation. We'd like to accompany you all the same. Yay! All right. Hey, 9 p.m. Would you look at that? It's currently 9 p.m. What in the... What's the meaning of this? How is it 9 p.m.? Ooh! Oh, this is an older frost. Uh, yeah. When we got thing. to Frost's room, we saw nada. It was all gone. The whole enchilada. Was this the work of the culprit? A dead body hidden in a chocolate chest. A murder weapon moved mysteriously to another room. This case was a real peach. It was going to take some serious sleuthing to get to the bottom of it all. <gasps> to be continued? Yes. Yeah. 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 Perfect timing. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. Right. That was great. All right. At, exact, well, at exactly 9 p.m. Yeah. Too. At exactly 9 p.m. All right. Well, oh, we're in the future again. Nice. Okay. So we're going to call it an evening there. I think this is good a time as